I'm going to open up uh, the public hearing on um, the select board's proposal regarding adopting guidelines uh, for constructing uh, homes of granting permits on Class 6 roads. So we've handed out, I believe, uh, posted the guidelines themselves, and we're here to accept commentary uh, from the public on the guidelines. Anyone who would like to? Yes. Um, Rain Hansen, Watson Lane. One of the questions that I had is I'm noticing that you want to have a situation, I think it's first of all, it's a good idea to have guidelines. I think that's a great idea. If we're going to do this at all, there should be guidelines. I'm not opposed to that. But I notice where there's a discussion of waiver of distance limitations, and it says, it has a suggestion that perhaps the applicant will be, plans to physically bring the road from a class six to a class five. And I'm concerned about those. What, sec what section is that for? That's under waiver of distance limitations. Select board may consider waiving the 600 foot limitation set out in section four, where the board finds the deviation from the 600 foot requirement is not contrary to the spirit and intent of the guidelines, or where the applicant proposes to physically bring the relevant portion of the class five, class six road to class five standards. And the board says there's a strong likelihood that the applicant will properly maintain the road. One of the problems that I see a lot of times when these things happen is you have a situation where the applicant themselves might in fact be willing to maintain the road and right after that they sell or they do something else and then the people that then own on the road are not able to maintain the road. And that's always a big issue. And that's a problem that I see, and I don't know how you deal with that, but that would be an issue. And that's an issue not just under waiving the 600-foot guideline, but also um, under number 6D, where it says, again, the, um, there's, a, there's a, it's the same problem where this select board can have a road maintenance agreement but again, as you do that, you sort of have the same problem. The, other, the question is, how do you hold them to the standard? If you have an agreement, how do you hold the applicant or their um, successors to the standard? Do you have them post a bond? Do you, what, what do you do to do that? I think you have to think about that when you do it, because I can see situations arising where originally, as I say, XYZ Construction Company says, hey, we'll build the road, we'll do whatever you want, etc. But the big problem is once something's done, it's the maintenance. And it's going to have to be maintained to allow for a, a fire engine or whatever Correct. to get down there. Correct. And I just don't know where you go with that. That's that, Those are my concerns. Well, my understanding is that the board, I don't know, if the, I can't remember if the guidelines state that, the board would ask that it be recorded as part of the deed, as it is with um, mm -hmm. the Scotland Road property, right. the Ray Vermet. So it's, in, it's part of that deed. And in fact, the board has not maintained that. Uh, he maintains that part of the Class 6 road. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's part of my deed that I'm on a private road. Right, and, and I understand. So, so, you know, it would be my understanding that we would do something like that, so that the board, it, the, I agree, absolutely what you're saying, the board would have to be absolutely convinced that whenever we did something like this, that it would not devolve back as an expense to the town at any point in time. Right, and I, and right, I can see the town ending up with an expense. We already have 31 lane miles of road that we do maintain. And yes. I'm afraid we're going to have more foist on it, foisted on us by the state pretty soon. And so those are concerns that I have. The other... Um, uh, section 8, Michael just pointed out to me. Um, the answer is, I think, your, your question in part, Lorraine. Notice to be recorded prior to the actual issuance of any building permit. Authorized by the select for the applicant shall provide the town with an executed notice to be recorded at the Stratford County Registry of Deeds. So... It would, it would, it would well, recording and recording a notice is fine, but I, I'm just saying you just need to be very careful. Those are the concerns. And the other questions that I had were just questions. Why did we come up with a 600 foot? Where did that come from? The 600 foot town of New Durham, because that's what they have. This and the cool. and and I hope we don't have to deal with a 12 percent grade. <laughs> 
<laughs> I said a priest. I'm a priest. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you said? Oh, it's over. It's over. I mean, it's yeah, again. Yeah. These are guidelines, yeah. and, yeah. and I understand. They don't even rise to the level of policies, and they talk about the mm -hmm. kinds of things that that may guide a future this board and future boards. And slope is one of them. Um, right, I understand. Yeah, the safety but I did, I did wonder where you came up with the six hundred town of Midfoot, town of Midtown. You know, our town is a lot smaller. I think you should consider a shorter distance than six hundred feet. Our you know, town of New Durham covers a lot of territory, and it's a lot of it's a more rural, even more rural than we are. How many how many class six roads do they have in New Durham? I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> you know, compared to I'm what's sure. Dover? Let's, can I? Is, this is a public hearing. I'm sorry. Okay. And sorry. So you need to be recognized, and we need to get your name and your address. Sure. And right now, Lorraine. Yeah. So Lorraine, I'll just give you other people who'd like to speak. So. As I say, the, the, I, I would just suggest maybe 600 feet might be a little long for right. this town. Maybe you might consider a, sh a slightly shorter distance if you're going to do that in your guidelines. Right, thank uh, those were my comments. All right, thank you. Sir? All right, Bill Hammond, 64 Rollins Road. I have bought a um, Class 6 road that goes behind my house. So the question is, she's brought up the 600 feet. I had that question, too. So what is Dover? Does, did you search the surrounding towns instead of going further out? Well, this out? is partly uh, our legal counsel uh, proffered this to us as a reasonable uh, set of guidelines for us to follow. And we read it and thought that it, in fact, was reasonable. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just, yeah. the question was. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Alan Van Duvers, 84 Rollins Road. I bought Class 6 Road. Um, when it comes down to the Section 6 improvement of Class 6 roads, yes. to go and start building roads, will that person be required to be, you know, specced by the state of New Hampshire, or is he going to make up his own specs just to get down the road? Uh, basically a glorified driveway, you know, just putting dirt down, taking a front-end loader and straighten it out so that he can get down there. I, I believe the guidelines refer to the fact that they have to follow our regular uh, subdivision <coughs> yeah, roads as standards. The reason why, reason why I said that is it says it's a 16-foot uh, travel surface with the two-foot shoulders, four inches of crushed gravel. So that really isn't bringing it up to a Class 5 status where they just put crushed gravel down. Class 5 status is tarred. Bring it up to specs. It doesn't have to be. It's not, it is going to remain, according to the guidelines, we're not talking about having someone change a class six road to a class five road. It would remain a class six road, according and to the guidelines. Get, the whether whether it whether it had followed you know class five standards or not, it would remain a class six road. So they won't even be bringing this thing up to spec. The that, that's, what, that's, you know, bring it up to a class 5 spec. They, is that what you're saying? That's, this, this is the part that, that I'm concerned with. So it says, for a single lot, the, for a single dwelling unit, the select board at a minimum shall adhere to the emergency travel lane standards. So what you see here is the bare minimum. Those are the what emergency. Someone, what yeah. would someone would have to do. But, the section above it states that they would need to follow the roadway-related subdivision regulations. Because one part here, the reason why I question it is because one part here says under, uh, what's that, it's like three, D3, and it says 50 foot right away. Then, then it comes down to right away the uh, 16 foot travel surface. The question is which one of these are going to start kicking in first? Will the 50 feet be kicking in, or will the 16 feet kick it in? Where's the... Where, yeah, it says uh, where a D, a, a number 6 D, oh, six it looks D. like number 3. So it says beyond the physical... Yeah, that'll be on the... Plastic the no, 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 no. That talks about the road maintenance agreement. Because I'm seeing two variances here, that's why I question it. So there, there are three things that they made in, the select board major. You 
beyond the physical standards that the select board is requiring. They also may require road maintenance agreements, address the need for potential turnaround, so either a, a, mm -hmm. a cul de sac or something of that nature, or require that applicants provide a deed or easement or um, given a 50 foot right of way. Um, but it doesn't mean it has to. Right. It was suggested by our planning consultant that um, at, at the planning board uh, consultation last month, um, or this month rather, uh, that um, if a town were to issue a building permit in a classic road, they would want to require um, whoever uh, the property owner to give the uh, right of way because there's no guarantee that that right of way was maintained or memorialized uh, when the road went uh, to a class six status. So, so it was suggested by our planning consultant that the majority of class six roads in the state of New Hampshire, that the right of way doesn't belong to the town. It reverts back to the original owner, unless it was memorialized by the town at the time that it went to class six status. So and, that's why we're putting it in here, so it's protect the town. If, we're, if we were to issue any of these permits, all of these are guidelines to protect the town, to maintain, to, to, to ensure that that the road is passable. If we're going to send any police or fire or any other emergency vehicles down there, they can get down there. But it's still the responsibility of the, the town isn't going to maintain it. It's going to be the responsibility of the landowner to, to maintain so, the road. And they're not going to receive the services. That would be part of the, the um, uh, maintenance agreement. To make sure that I'm understanding you correctly, yes. so then you would you would you're telling me that the 50 foot right away would kick in unless I come in with a lawyer and start screaming sue sue sue, and I can get it down to 16 feet, no. plus the two foot. The, these are guidelines. Right. First of all, the guidelines. So the board the board can review a, a, a homeowner's or a property owner's building permit and deny it for any one of a number of reasons. You know, but we've been faced with requests to consider permits granting right. a home right. on a yeah. Class 6 road, and this board would find it helpful to have a set of guidelines to consider. Yeah. So this is, so these are guidelines that we've read and seemed rational and, and helpful to us, okay. and so they would help guide us when we were meeting with a property owner. You know, one of the things we find is we're, at least that I found in, in my short number of years in, in office, is that no two situations are the same. And you know, and, and you're just trying to give this board and future boards the things that, that they need to think about before they go ahead and make what may be a momentous decision. Because there were there have been a number of, of projects that have moved forward on Class Six Road without any kind of guidelines, or I don't want to say rhyme or reason, but um, without any guidelines. So that we had boards in the past just making decisions based on who knows what. This at least gives this board and future boards a starting point to say, well, you at least need to should be considering this criteria if you're actually going to consider issuing a building. This doesn't guarantee anything. People, it's all going to still be a case-by-case -case basis. There's no guarantee that any building permit would be issued on a Class 6 road. I think the, the good thing... I think it doesn't it start out, Mike, by even saying that it, does say that. it says that it's not... You know, there are good reasons the why the town is, is doesn't much. want to do it. I don't know. It was just a starting point, really. Right. The town, okay. the, the town of New Durham was sued a number of years ago. I mean, they, if someone wanted to go on a Class 6 road, they didn't have any guidelines. That's why they created them. So there has been in recent, in the last year or so, um, an application to the planning board to go on a Class 6 road. We're separate from that process. Um, the planning board has their own process. But if they say yes to the project, we don't have any guidelines to why or how we would issue a building permit. So, let me, let me ask this question then. With the Class 6 roads not being used anymore, is the town, why doesn't the town just abandon them, give them, put them on the tax map, and do away with all of it? It requires action of the town meeting in order to do that. This is a, ta it's a town asset. The Class 6 road is a town asset. And so, a board couldn't make that kind of a decision on behalf of, of the town. I mean, technically, if I, I don't know how I would do this, but if I wanted to drive behind your house, I mean, I'd have to go through a lot of trees, I think, but 
to go down a shady lane, but I mean technically that's still open to the public to well, use. Yeah. Well, yeah. The train. So I mean, yeah. It's well, yeah. Or, or Scoutland Road or an old Indigo Hill. I'm trying to think of the other one. Fresh Creek. Fresh Creek. Thank you. I mean, these are still public wouldn't, roads. Wouldn't abandoning the road just take care of all these problems? But they ha already have that. That's pretty much it. That's why they're class six days. We, we don't maintain a class six road. Right. That's, that's so we've understand. not maintained it. Right. We right. don't maintain the class six road that is by Bicentennial Park. Right. But there is a house that a board many, many moons ago granted a building permit to. And part of the, the town, town meeting. The town meeting did, yeah. Like, so yeah. part part of their obligation, and that's also written to the deed, is that they maintain that piece of road up until their driveway, which is not cheap, it's pretty long. Yeah. But, and it's still, it's, anybody can can ride along that road, and they do, because they'll- Oh, they do, they do. Their, people and, walk and, it, yeah. dogs, sure. uh, and so he, dirt he bikes, four wheelers, it. You know, it affects, it affects the valuation of the property, because whoever buys that house has got to have the wherewithal to, to be able to maintain that stretch of road. Um, so under these guidelines, that building permit wouldn't have been issued. There's more than six a lot, heck of a lot more than six hundred feet in on that road. So, but the town meeting did it. So. But you can bypass that. You can bypass a six hundred foot guideline that shows if we wanted to. Yeah, right. we could. They're just guidelines. Yeah, yeah. they, they are guidelines. It just you know it for from a you know again it just gives us something to look at. And if we decide to do something like egregiously different from this, it, it would allow people like you to say, why did you do that? You've got this set of guidelines. What on earth about this decision you just made seemed right to you? So, it, you know, it, it helps, keeps, helps keep us all honest, you know, saying, in, in being consciously, uh, making a conscious decision about what we think might be something that we would consider under all situations with regard to a class six road. And you know, while allowing a homeowner, a property owner, some ability to, to do some things that she or he might like to do with their piece of property. You know, we're here trying not to be a hindrance, but any decision we make that may advantage one person could disadvantage a lot of people. And so, you right. know, you're always having to try to weigh it on. I guess, yeah. 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 I mean, and there's I nothing to stop anyone now um, from petitioning to, to turn a Class Six road back into a Class Five road, so like the the road that goes, well, Shady Lane. I could use Fresh Creek. Let's use Fresh Creek instead. If someone could petition. A number of folks would need to, to sign it, but they could petition to turn that back into a Class Five road. If it passes a town meeting, well, we'll be regrading and repaving and and you can petition to shut it down too. Pardon? You can petition to shut the road oh, yeah. down. Oh Oh, for sure. Yeah. And abandon it, and then go back to Class Six steps. Or even no, no, no. Just shut it down completely, just, and just the land goes things. back to each of other. Yeah, and but the people that have property in deep, which would be basically my aunt, still has that access to it right. through that section. Yeah. So it isn't like somebody's going to get shafted. You know, is it's I think a great idea. We just abandon the whole thing. You don't have to worry about it because there's only what Shady Lane and the road off Sligo. For Fresh Creek. There's Rawls. Fresh Creek, there's Shady Lane, Old and Scotland. Scotland. Is there anything Scotland. else? Scotland. 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 Oh, yeah. Scotland. Okay. What about the Dodge Creek? That's not that's private. 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 Is it? Don't to think about, then you don't have to worry about Class 6 roads. Well, to be honest, we don't worry about them now. We don't maintain them in any way. But they're still public rights of way. Where yeah, but you still got to come up with these guidelines. You take the guidelines, you throw them yeah. away. Yeah, so they are public rights of way. I, I don't even know what the warrant, what such a warrant would have to say. Somebody would have to uh, look at the correct way to phrase such a, a warrant, and then it would have to go to the... But the after, after you guys posted all this, I went online, and, and it's very comparable to a lot of towns in the state. It's just kind of surprising how close it is, but... And it's probably all the same source. Yeah, probably. Yeah, they're all because, so you know, close. That, I mean, you know, it, it, we don't have a legal department. We don't have a research department. You know, so we're small towns, part-time well, government, and so you well, look for something that I've seems... I've lived here all my life, so yeah, we, but we all have. Yeah, you know. something that seems reasonable. You know, this was, our attorney did find it for us and said, look, I've read it. I think this is, a, this is reasonable. It's rational. It makes sense. Take a look at it. See what you think. You know, we talked about it. 
we thought, you know, it, it was it was a good idea. You know, we're happy to have some of these comments that we're seeing tonight. Uh, we still think it's a good idea to have, you know, guidelines. And your thought about sort of abandoning all classics roads is interesting. Um, you, you know, you could look it up and pursue, see what might be, what that course of action is. I don't know what it might be, but I know the town has to do it. The town would have to vote, vote for it if it's possible. Um, because sure. I do have a friend of mine that lives on a classics road in Dover, but his house was there when the road was going. And, uh, so I'm well aware of classics roads because I've done a lot of research for him and with him over the years. And uh, the guidelines are great. I mean, black and white, you know, like I said, there's a few concerns that I yeah. had, they came up. So it sounds like to me it's a base, you know, case by case what this whole situation is going to bring. So nothing is basically, sounds like a gray area. It gives you something to stop with. Gives something you to start with, questions to, to ask, you know, something things right. to, to be concerned about. Whereas, you know, a board, you know, in the future might not think about slope or width or emergency right. vehicles or whatever. So at least it lays down the things that we should be concerned about. And believe me, there are times when you yeah. just like to have some guidelines. Yeah. You know, you oh, want yeah. to have know that somebody else has thought about this issue, and and has helped us. Yeah, through otherwise, it. you don't have guidelines. Everybody's in a sue happy society where you everybody's running to the lawyers to sue everybody and sue you for this, that, and whatever. All right. Well, I'm going to no. see if there's anybody else who'd like to speak to this. Okay. Event, I know. Yes. Uh, on Class 6 roads subject to gates and bars, or is that a separate? They were voted separate on as being subject to gates and bars, which just means, my understanding, is that if someone wanted to put a bar across it, you, you would have to put it in such a way that anybody could open it up and go through it. That's that's my understanding of what that means. And I'm going to look to Mr. Connolly, who walked in. The legislature made all plastics roads subject to gates and bars. That's kind of what... It, yeah, Paul, Paul Connolly, uh, landowner on Roberts Road. <laughs> still got some stuff. There you go, yeah. Uh, it, it, it's a very good description. It's, uh, Selma, it's like a, uh, a virtual gate, if you will. Um, okay. it's, it's language that's been used in the state for a couple hundred years, gates and bars, mm -hmm. and uh, typically when a road is uh, formally discontinued, say from a class five status, like pretty much every road you travel on, to a class six, the wording is included, subject to gates and bars, uh, and as, as she said, uh, you, can't, you can't lock the gate. And, and mm -hmm. cut it off to public use. It has to be open to public use, even if it's been discontinued to a class six status. So as such, you very, very rarely see the gate and the bar put up. But there are times when it is put up, and as such, when it is put up, keys to that gate have to be provided to the public, basically. So it's, it's mm -hmm. difficult to shut it off entirely. Thank you. So Any other? We have one physical gate that I know of, and that's Scout. on Scout Lane right. Road. Yeah. On the end of. Uh, right, and you can walk around, you can use the other yeah. Yeah. Are there any other questions or comments? I'm going to go to someone who hasn't spoken yeah, no, yet. No, that's fine. All right, thank you. Charlie Dunn. Yes, uh, 44 Rollins Road. There was a bar and gate at Shady Lane at one time. It has been taken down. But my question is okay, it was closed by God, but bars and gates in 1970 at the town meeting. Does it have to be opened up at a town meeting since it was closed at a town meeting? It, it is not going to be closed. It's going to remain an open class six road. If, you know, there's nothing in this guidelines that would say that, uh, that's not the guidelines, but there's nothing in the guidelines that would say uh, that a, a permittee, a homeowner, is closing off that road. The road, it remains a class, it would remain a class six road, available to the public. Um, I can't imagine anybody wanting to put a gate or a bar, but it, subject to gates and bars doesn't mean there has to be a gate or a bar. It just, mm -hmm. it just. But there exist, there was existing at one time. It's possible, quite possible, like, you would know. 
Yes. And I would not. <laughs> There's but, two now. Mm -hmm. If you go to the other end of the road yep. towards uh, what road Doctor's are we talking Park, about? Uh, Shady Lane, the one he's talking about. Mm -hmm. If you go to Doctor's Park and you come through the Dover section, there's a gate that's locked. You go through the sled park, they have a sledding and snowboard park. Mm -hmm. Go through there, there's another gate there, and that one's locked. So oh, there's yeah. two on no, that road. they've unlocked that one. They've locked the But there is a gate there. Yeah, the gate so was is there. That on our, is that Dover? Dover. I, is it Dover? Yeah, I, so. yeah. I think that's Rollins. I think that's Rollins. One of them is, but the other one is. I think they're both in Rollins. Oh, but anyway. Okay, both All right, well, thank you for that info. It is Rollins because the one, uh, ATV club just has uh, one Dover, one uh, Rollins. Access just to that, like, 40 foot section. And if you could get on to the other trails, the private trail. Okay. That's why it's not Rollins. That's why it's legal in that's what I was trying to Is there anyone else who would like to speak to this issue? Going once? Going twice? <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, Philip Jennison, 125 Bear Road. Um, as far as the 600 foot distance, um, I own a lot behind my house that I bought from Mrs. Master. That she owned for 30 years and been paying as a house lot. Um, that road is not 50 foot wide, Fresh Creek Road that you're talking about. Um, so it'd be, it'd be impossible to make it a 50 foot right away because it's not 50 foot distance. Um, it, you know, I think the town should have some legal writing in the standard saying that the town's identified for insurance purposes for the improvements that are done up to the, the house that gets built on a, on a road. Mm -hmm. right, so uh -huh. the Paul can correct me if I'm wrong because we've been working on this for a while now together. I believe the statute actually spells out what the road maintenance plan could have in it, and that's part of it. Okay, yeah. And as far as the distance from the, the road back, my lot is 400 feet deep before that lot starts because I've got two acre lot. It's 200 by 400 and 400 feet deep. So to go the 600 foot makes it possible to build on that lot behind me. If you, you could drop the 500, it still do it. But, um, you know, you need to be back about that far to get to a back lot. So that that's. So the 600 to seems reasonable to you? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And if you get much more than that, well, then that's. Well, the, the, and the, I think the issue with any any guideline with regard to length is to make to is to help ensure that your emergency vehicles. Exactly. And, and like you said, it, it says you got to have a hand held for me. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak to this issue? Huh? Going once? <coughs> Going twice? I got one. Yes, Gary. <laughs> Gary Van Duveris. Yeah, 78 Rollins Road. I had a question. Mr. Dion brought up about opening or closing a Class 6 road. That Class 6 road was voted by the town back whenever we set back in the 70s. Yes. So that means that you can open all of it or part of it, it, it with it this means, format. <clears throat> the town, without the town knowing. Well, the town, I believe what the town did in calling it a Class 6 road subject to gates and bars is just to ensure that it was clearly a Class 6 road. Uh, it was not going to be a Class 5 road. The town was not going to maintain it. And you could close it off using gates and bars. Oh, but, I, but the public still needed that. It's a public way. Oh, I understand. It always remains a public way. But are you talking giving authorization to open a Class 6 road at 600 feet, or are they talking about someday opening up the whole thing under the same set of circumstances? You have the 600 foot parse, you know, yes. length. So does that mean the town will have fluctuation in going another 600 feet someday down the road without the town voting for it? 600 feet from a class 5 road. So anything anything farther than, if you're, if you're talking about a class 6 road and you've got a building at 600 feet, anything, anything Be beyond that, that? Is beyond it because it's 600 feet from the, cla the nearest class 5. I, I understand, but but the board can give the authorization for someone to open up up to 600 feet of Class 6 road without the town voting on it. 
It's open now. I guess I'm not sure that well, I understand. Well, yes, but if, if, you know, it's, a public it's open for walking, traffic, and so on. But drive, they can legally drive cars down there and use the frontage on that road to build a house under the circumstances of today. No, you need a building permit. This well, is part. So one needs a building permit to so build a house. But part of the question is, yes, you can do it currently today. If you get a waiver, there's two different ways to do it. If you're subdividing, you have to get a waiver from the planning board. If you're not subdividing, you have to go to the ZBA and get a waiver. But it could be done currently. That doesn't mean that the select board has to issue a building permit in any of those cases. Just because the ZBA or the planning board issues a, a, a waiver. I mean, that's the, the current law. But the status of the road doesn't change. It's still a class six road. It's just it's just this one little section we're allowing, uh, well, potentially would allow building. But the status of the road doesn't change. So the rest of the road is, is still unbuildable, I guess is the best way to put it. But yeah. I mean, right now, if someone wanted to drive a Jeep down well, they that road, they're not going to get very far on no, that one. But, but you're right. But they could do it. I mean, it's still a... You can, you can go down Fresh Creek right now you, if you, you want. You could try. I mean, you want to go down Scoutland and take your car down past that gate, you can. You could, yeah. I, mean, I would. Well, I, right I understand. <laughs> and have done it. <laughs> Legally, you could now, but I would yeah. recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, I look at as keeping that road as public access is one thing. Mm -hmm. But you're potentially going to give building permits along it, that's a whole nother ball of wax. It absolutely you know, is. So it's almost like it's a two-sided sword. You can have it this way, but you can't have it that way. Well, you know, class six to me is class six. You know, it's pretty you know, cut and dry. I, I understand, you know, the town has done it in the past. You know, we did it with Scotland Road. This predates, you know, this particular board, but it was done at Scotland Road, uh, Green Bay. Yeah, but even the, even the road that we're all questioning, because naturally we abut it, it was back a few years ago when Steve Whitcomb tried to build a house on that same parcel of land. And the town made it so expensive for him, the numbers didn't work. And here we are a few years later, someone's petitioning the town again to build a house on a Class 6 road, and now it looks like we've changed all our ideas about it. I think... This came up at the planning board. Oh, I'm sure. Um, I don't know how many months ago, a year or so ago now. And Mr. Macklin, who was the chair at the time, stated to Mr. Wickham, actually, he showed sure. up, I believe, that you know, one board, first of all, the statutes change, zoning changes, but one board can't tie the hands of the next board just because mm -hmm. they made this decision in whatever year it was. Doesn't mean that well, in 2016 at that time, we weren't going to make a different decision. I mean, it's, I mean, even when you intend, if we pass so, it, doesn't mean we're going to issue any. Yeah. I mean, well, it, that's true. I mean, it's that's, I mean, it's a struggle. We struggle with this all the time. You, you know, the the again, it's it's the competing interests, and so you, you try to be fair to well, like, all of us, not just to one. To oh, all I fully us. understand, but and, and so you know, you brought up the point or yeah go question ahead. when a person buys a piece of land. It doesn't matter if it's one acre or 50 acres. You know what the law is. You know what the circumstances are that you right. bought it. Now here we are a few years later, and we're looking to change everything, you know, to make two or three people happy. I just don't know what the intent of the town is when you have a road that is shut down under non-use but still public access. I have a hard time with that. Mm -hmm. I understand. I think the, the, the one, I mean, I don't, I share your concerns. I think we all share your concerns. But it's happened in the past. And that, that's where that's what we face. I mean, it just happened on, uh, on, on Greenview a couple of years ago, right? Where it went from class six, was brought up to class five standards, and eventually will be accepted by the town meeting, I'm sure. But under what process, under what guidelines did the select board use? None of us could tell you. I mean, I know how the one on Scotland happened because I can read the town report and, 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 look, and look at what the minutes were from 1970 or whatever, or 1981 or whatever it was. Ah, you know, so that's, I think that's why we're trying to do this. Sure. I mean, that's, but I mean, I, I, 
I don't disagree with your. I mean, this is supposed to be a public hearing. I'm supposed to be hearing from you, yeah. but I don't disagree with your with your sentiment that you know we want to try to preserve these open spaces, and that's probably why they discontinued the use. Maybe not in all cases, but but again, the town has done it so many times. It's it's yeah. it's nice to at least have something to go by if we I don't if disagree. we want to think about it. I mean. Any other comments? I think in, in your guidelines it says if you have two or more houses, you have to bring it up to a class five road, which would have to be through a town meeting and petition. So you, you can't, in his scenario, you can't build one and build another one, because that would be the second one. In, Agreed. In the, I believe that was the intent exactly. in, in the guidelines is to ensure that we're talking about a house. Right. A glorified driveway, basically, to one lot. Right. And, yes. And we bring up the other situation. It's really not your name. <laughs> Any other comments or questions? All right. Uh, going once. I have one more. So close. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. so if you have, Paul might be able to answer this question too. So if you have frontage, say say the road opens the whole way. As. as as a class five road. As a class five, so which does require from. town acceptance. Town acceptance would mm -hmm. have to do that. So yes. say it opens all the way to the hospital. Mm -hmm. Now I probably have, well, I have at least 200 feet on Rollins Road because that's what is required. I would have probably 180 feet on Shady Lane. So now would I have to pay frontage for Rollins and Shady Lane? Would my property value? Mm -hmm. How would you assess that? I don't know the answer. I don't know. I'm just but, trying to. Yeah, I, it's see. it's a good question. I, clearly, clearly. If you had access, maybe though, but I don't know. Well, it would be right on. I mean, yeah, but but, it, but you wouldn't, but you wouldn't you have to get a, a permit to build the driveway. Right? Have another driveway. Right? Yeah, so that would actually be front end. Yeah, if it was actually. Driveway. Then then you would probably be assessed, but I, I don't. I, I don't know. I do know because it's happened quite recently that a house that is on a class six road where this property owner has to maintain the class six road has an impact on the value of that property because it... My question was if it went up to a class five, to be at Oak Street number two is yeah. basically what I'm feeling. Yeah. If that opens up, Oak Street's in my backyard. So my property value, if I want to sell my home, comparable to what the houses are selling for now, I get good, a good chunk of change from my home. But if you put Oak Street number two behind it, it would probably cut it in half. That was my, that's my concern, is if it opened up. Because if you open up 600 feet, what's to say, oh wow, this is a good access to the hospital. Mm -hmm. What's to say that the rest of it doesn't open? There is a reason that Wentworth Douglas built their main entrance in the back of the building. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's if you're just going to say that. You know, and, and it was proposed at a board meeting at Wentworth Douglas that they buy my house. And the road would come down Shady Lane, rip my house down, and it would dump out on, uh, on Rolling Road. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm just trying to figure out if, if who accepts these guidelines, does that go to the town? at town meeting for to accept the guidelines that you're proposing. The guidelines can be accepted by just this select. So, okay. Yeah. However, again, it it even just according to these guidelines, a class six road is not going to change to a class five road without town approval. Okay. So all of those arguments that you're making now, you would be able to make uh, at a town meeting okay. or, or run up to a town That's meeting. That's my question. Yeah. So, and you would be able to say it as loudly and clearly and get as many people as you would like to say similar things, and they could be arguments on the other side. But that's that would be the purpose of a town meeting. That these guidelines only say and, and guide us to uh, consider uh, having the road uh, uh, have class five standards, which is different. It would, okay. remain, it would remain a Class 6 road, it would be one permit on a uh, Class 6 road, no more, according to the guidelines, no more than 600 feet from 
the nearest class five row, not a class five standard either, a class five row, okay. row that's classified as class five. Yeah. And honestly, there's nothing to stop 25 people now putting in a petition, bringing a petition to us in March, or February probably, and saying we want to turn Shady Lane into a class five row. We don't live anywhere near you. Uh, you can oh yeah. Outside of town. Yes. And you, yeah, I mean we could be fighting that. And then the town would have to that. accept that. As town. If the, if the if past, the town meeting, what they could say, pass. no, I mean, we don't want to do it. Yeah. And okay. I don't know if it's just a majority vote. I guess it would be a majority so. vote. You know, just one more than it's half. It's just like, so So the 600 feet, so Phil's got property on Fresh Creek. He builds a house, but there's got to be somebody beyond him that owns a piece of property back there, too, that might want to build a house off there. So can they take from where he stops? No. No. Yeah. no, because that's a second post. Oh, okay. So it would have to be guided by the sand. Right. You can't leapfrog. You can only, you can only do um, one. Do okay. Yeah, there's a good leapfrog, there'd be really no point of even having right. a conversation. That, yeah. So that's where the, I think you answered your question where that gray area is. Because you can, case by case basis, what if he's 1,800 feet? It says it's case by case. It right. doesn't cut it off at 600 feet. Absolutely right. Absolutely, but you know, it's at least for me, and I, I can't speak for the entire board. You know, if you get something written down that, that you know a board has bothered to do, and has, has done it as a result of a public hearing, it's not that you all can vote on it, but it, you know, you you think many many times before you did something was really that far off the mark. Would a board do 601 feet? I was just going to say that. I mean, if you could ask that one have 610 feet. Clear shot from a class five road that you can see it from that road. And to me, that's uh, you got to perfectly be, level. You could have someone level. that with 400 feet that isn't a clear shot. You can't see it, and it's like this. A, 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 a 12 percent slope, and I'm going to say not a chance. I mean, so okay. there's no guarantee just because it's under that 600. But it's just some flex. I mean, is that the magic number? I have no idea. That's what New Durham thought the magic number was. I don't know why, but. Are there other comments on this uh, proposal? I hope you're all as thoroughly <laughs> as confused as we all Can have I say been thank, thank you for coming. Usually we have our public hearings, and you know we're done in about five minutes. So this was really helpful to us to hear back from all of you. We appreciate it. Um, yes, did you want to say? I, I would like to close off the public hearing. I had a question about the public hearing. Sorry. And I'm sorry if this question has already been asked, but does if the select board allows a proposal to go through, does it have to go through town meeting? No, no. Okay. It doesn't okay. now. It doesn't now. So this, this, is, these are, again, they're guidelines to help this board, a future board, think through uh, the implications of doing. A, Issuing a building permit. Like but this. wasn't it the town meeting that put gates and bars on these roads? The town meeting memorialized, or whatever the ver ver verbiage is, that that particular road, as well as the others, were class six roads, subject to gates and bars, meaning that someone could put a gate or a bar, but even if they did, it had to remain open to the public. So it doesn't mean there has to be a gate or a bar. They're public ways, they remain public ways, so. So as a town, we designate you to reopen them at your discretion? We're not reopening them. Okay. No, this Just doesn't change the status of the road one bit. Okay. If, the, if, if, if it were, we would, it would have to be a town meeting. Okay, yes, we you. don't have the authority to change it to other than a class six road. We're just considering the possibility of issuing a bit are there circumstances under which we might consider issuing a building permit on a Class 6 road? And so the guidelines are there to help us, us and future boards think that through. Okay, thank you. Well, any other comments? Go in once. <laughs> <laughs> Go in twice. Go in twice. And I will call the public hearing a closed at whatever time this is. Thank you all. Six for your thank, thank you very much. We really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. <laughs> I'd like that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We're going for the next meeting.
else to provide some credit. Thank you. I'm now going to open up the select board meeting at 6.45, we're a little late tonight, and we are, um, I'm going to entertain a notion to go to the non-public right away with regard to personnel issues. I move that we go to non-public session for the interpreter dealing with the personnel issues. Second, roll call. Michael? Yes. Jody? Yes. Suzanne? Yes. And we are inviting Michael LaPointe and Nancy Dion to be here with us. Thank you. Has regionally purchased a service called MapGeo. It's an online GIS viewer, and so what that is, is it's basically just a website where you're able to interact with different types of spatial data. So um, the sheet I passed out um, at all your spots um, is a list of the different types of data that we'll be offering through this website. And so that's everything from wetlands and you know water bodies and um, watersheds, different types of natural resources, to conservation lands, to zoning and land use, um, different, some different economic development factors and data that we'll be including there. Um, so it's sort of a, a broad range of data, uh, but the big key of MapGeo is that it's um, specifically designed to be an online parcel viewer. Um, so what that means is it can really um, give much greater access to your residents for the publicly available assessing data than that um, parcel boundaries. Um, and so National Regional Planning Commission, um, one of our sort of fellow RPCs, they have had a MapGeo site up and running for a few years now. Their GIS manager um, actually has some former ties to this company and so they were able to implement that and get that going fairly early on. Um, and they've experienced a lot of success with this in their region. So they actually have all their communities that participate and include their parcel and assessing data. Um, MapGeo, they send you metrics and sort of statistics about the usage and you know they've seen the service be very popular more so even than you know their RPC website. Oh just keep just keep hitting it. I think return or okay. Um, so so can I come Yeah okay. definitely so you say a uh, parcel data and assessing data. Yes. So if do you mean that someone's tax card is yes. at the level of it is at the level of the tax card? Yes. Yep. Um, so this is Nashua's map geo site. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just do you want to turn lights out everybody. That would be helpful. Okay. Yeah. Yes please. Yeah. We don't have, it's either off or on. We don't have yeah. to in between. No, this will be good because you shouldn't sort of read too much. But um, so I'm just going to take a few minutes and sort of discuss some of the different features of this site. Um, you know, there's. And you said it's Nashua's. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Ours will look very similar. Um, you know, we will have some different data layers, but there's some that will be almost exactly as represented here. Um, and so really what we think, you know, this is a service because we're running it at the regional level, we can provide it at a you know, very competitive cost and sort of provide those savings out to you. Whereas if you wanted to get that up and running individually, it'd be, you know, significantly more costly. Um, and then, you know, by providing this online, we're anticipating that, you know, it can help reduce walk-ins and calls to your assessing department. Um, it helps people just answer questions themselves, not only about their, you know, property or other assessing information, um, but also if they wanted to know, I've always been curious if there's wetlands, you know, at the back end of my property. Mm -hmm. You know, those are the types of questions they can start to answer here. So it's just a really powerful tool to give much more data and information to your residents um, and interact, I think, in a very um, smooth, you know, interface. So, the first time you visit the website, it does come up with a disclaimer, um, basically just saying, you know, all of this data is for planning purposes only. It's not for any legal use. You can, you know, sue your neighbor over a shown boundary line, things like that. Um, so since we are doing it as our planning commission and not as an individual municipality, it does start out at the regional level, um, but there's a tool to drop down. So your residents could click here, and you know, and they could click Rollinsford, and it would zoom right to your community. 
And so from here, you know, I'm a resident and I'm just curious, you know, someone asked me how big my lot is and I just can't remember. I don't want to have to drive down to the town office to go figure that out. And we don't want you to have to drive down and pinch you up just. <laughs> <laughs> and so we really want you to be self-sufficient. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you can search, you can search by your address, your name, um, your map and lot number, things like that to start to narrow zoom that down. To zoom in. We'll see. So, I may not pick one that's actually in the field, but so let's go with 19 micro. And so, so there it is. Outline, yep, right? So I'm this person. I'm N. Catherine A. Johnson. I live at 19 Mike Lane, and boom, there's my property. It's on a cul-de-sac. Okay. And so, on the right, so this is you know sort of the main feature, and ours would look similar, um, but we're able to get this digital property card automatically populating. Um, actually, want to. How does that data get populated originally? Because do you, do you ask for a fee from our assessing company? Huh? What are some of the ways that you... Yep, so, so the, the two things we will need um, if you elect to participate um, is current tax parcel data. Mm -hmm. um, and so general, like last summer, I did contact all the municipalities to try to get the most recent parcel data just because we do use that for a lot of other mapping projects uh, for town. And so I think for all part, I have current as of 2016, so, mm -hmm. you know, that's helpful. Um, and then just an export of your assessing database, just an Excel, um, okay. so that way I can join them, the spatial data, yeah. to all of that okay. information. Excellent. That's easy. So, what I want to do is with these digital property cards on the right, you should also be getting a Google Street View image. And so you can also, you know, get that image. Hmm. Granted, it is dependent on Google having driven it. Um, to kind of also see, so you know, maybe you're a prospective home buyer looking at homes in the area and you want to scope it out a little more. Um, you can actually click, and it will take you into Google Street View, so you can, you know, move around and investigate yeah. a little more. Um, you know, it's just sort of integrating all yeah, of these yeah. tools that people like to use and, and now set them here. Yep. And it's just it's putting them all in one place yeah. now. So you're gonna show us some of these other data layers too, like buttons yep. and stuff like that. So back over here, um, you can see Nashua does have quite a few. And so are those data layers on the right that they've chosen to include, <coughs> and for each of those, yeah. we need to, what do we need to feed the, or to get all the information? Yep, so, so Strapper will be doing all of that work. And so that's another benefit to the town is that your responsibility for this is just getting us that assessing database export and making sure we have current parcel data. Mm -hmm. After that, um, we do all of the legwork behind the scenes. So for example, uh, conservation lands, how, um, you know, people submit that to the official state database at Granite, that gets updated annually. Um, in our region, you know, people care a lot about conserving land and natural resources, and so, say there was a new parcel that was conserved, I could go and add that to our maintained data set and update it here, you know, with, within a day or two to show that it was being reflected. Um, but yep, so it's just as simple as sort of toggling them on and off. You can even change the transparency. So say you wanted conservation land and land use um, to show mm -hmm. underneath, um, but you wanted one more subtle, things mm -hmm. like that, and it gives that legend to mm -hmm. provide that information. Aerial imagery. Um, we have a very slow internet connection. No, it's actually like that. Air, it's you know, it's such a high it's resolution. It's yeah. you know, that's a lot it's of a lot data of loading. So um, we're also planning on having um, some historic imagery as well, so people could compare 
you know, what their property looks like in, I think it's 1974, you know, versus 2015, um, to see just visually what changes may have occurred. Um, you know, zoning is a big one. What, what zone does my neighborhood fall into, mm -hmm. or, you know, what town is in Absolutely. And so, uh, once once a town or municipality signs on, mm -hmm. how, are, are you actually having? Uh, are you are you just out right now soliciting? Do you have anybody in this region that's done doing it yet? Yep. Um, I've met with two communities already. Um, Lee is interested in planning on moving forward. Um, Durham. There's a bit of a roadblock they're interested in, but it just depends on sort of if we can resolve that other issue first. Mm -hmm. um, I'm meeting with a, a few other communities this week and next as well. Mm -hmm. so. so once, let, let's say we, this won't happen, because we don't have that quickly, but let's say we made a decision like tonight. <coughs> what, what, what's the timeline for when it might come live? So and on. do you want me to put lights back on at this point? Or? Uh, or do you have more show us? There's a couple of those okay. things. Uh, uh, but just, just to answer your question though, I did bring um, a copy of the services agreement that we're proposing. Um, so basically, um, we would be asking, it would be a, a one-time sort of flat fee of $1,000 for the year for your participation. Mm -hmm. um, we would like to have this launched and running by November. Um, and so, you know, meeting with communities now, knowing that it may take some time to not only make the decision, you know, we set the size of funds in your budget um, and then get the data. And so you would have about a month and a half to sort of organize that. Um, certainly if you felt that that was still too short of a timeline, um, our goal is to still launch and have it going by November. You can always, you know, say it's mid to late November or even December. By the time that gets organized, we can still then upload it at that point and include it. So it's not, it is a, a soft deadline. Um, certainly, I wouldn't want you to feel like you would have to make a decision immediately so or you would miss the vote. So the setup fee is a thousand, the one time fee, beginning yep. of a thousand, what's the ongoing? It, so that would be it for the year, and so then next year we would ask to renew that and it would just be a thousand for the following year. So, so you know, we were able to absorb the, you know, there were setup costs involved, and then we have a maintenance fee, um, and so we were able, to, you know, to sort of distribute that somewhat sure. and absorb that ourselves as the commission. So as far as you know right now, the fee would be $1,000 a year? Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, there certainly is potential for that to decrease if more communities decide to join in the future. Mm -hmm. um, and there are things that could potentially cause our fees to go down in the future where, you know, we would pass that on to you. Um, but we feel certainly that for $1,000 there's, you know, a lot of service and benefits where you know, trying to get Mac Geo or other comparable sites going, you know, yeah. that would be yeah. a very difficult price yeah. to Let's see how well my board knows me. So, board, what do you think, what do you think I think about this? I think you love it. <laughs> <laughs> She's right. So, I think this could be very useful for the planning and zoning. Absolutely, Mike. Yeah, I think so, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so, in one of my other discussions um, in the rest of the with the community, you know, I tend to focus a lot on the benefit residents are going to get, yeah. um, but they were are thinking about trying to get their in-house GIS going, and so they were saying, you know, this would be helpful for other municipal staff who don't know how to use the GIS part that, that some other people are going to be doing, but they can still go in and access all this data without having to call over to assessing or call over to the planning department or, you know, you know they can start to ask that access more town data as well. Great access to really helpful useful information. It really would help uh, yeah. offload. A lot of residents would ease the burden on our absolutely the person staff here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and Some so, people just mm -hmm. want to know what, what's the zoning. They just right. want to know what they're zoned at. And so um, we'll be holding workshops um, probably a couple at Stratford and then if you wanted I could come to the town office or if you want to set something up somewhere else. Um, just to invite either municipal staff or kind of put it out to residents and then do just a half hour demo of here's Map Geo, here's mm -hmm. what's included, here's some of the basic features how to navigate. Um, 
you know, I, I think it's very user friendly, but then again, I, this is what I do all day, every day. Could so, you click on wildlife habitat Minecraft. Yes. And that's the. That's, that's from the wildlife action. No, no, I'm just the color. So it's the greenish brown <coughs> color yep. that will be. Yep, some of the blue. Oh, there it is. You know, it's a way to access a lot of data that SRPC already has. It's yeah. really not accessible to, to our yeah. residents yeah. or to us, or to, to yeah. us even. And and this just, you know, it's it's one place to go. I mean, no offense to your website. It has a lot of good stuff, but no, there's a lot. Right. It's just, you know, it's just, it's overwhelming yeah. sometimes. And and really none of this is anything you could access yeah, or on this. Exactly. get from our website. You have to call me in your you know, call yeah. the office yeah. and you right. get something that can make you a map or answer your question. Yeah. But this is delightful. Could, if, if, is there printing capability from this or, or a... Um, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yep. So I, um, the last part of my demo that I just I'll like to you. tell this story. So uh, one of my good friends is a contractor and um, he needed to submit a building permit for a house he was working on in Cape Elizabeth. And, you know, it had a map and lot number and all these various things. And he's like, how am I supposed to know the map and lot number for this house? And I was like, I got you. Like, I'll figure it out. <laughs> so I just Google Cape Elizabeth, and they happen to have a map geosite, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and so based on the address, I was like, It's a very well community. community. Yes, it doesn't surprise me. Community. Yeah. But, um, so, but I was able to, you know, quickly find the property and get in the map and lot number and then he was saying he also had to include sort of a sketch yes. of mm -hmm. what was going sure. to be changed and set, so set I said I, I can do that too that for you. Yeah. Um, so a really cool feature of MapGeo is that you can actually draw and put labels and do you know some basic mapping yourself and measuring. So with this markup tool you know I could say my future house. Mm -hmm. I want to send a cute little map to someone, and then with a circle, I could say, and I'm going to put a pool in the backyard. And you know, maybe a, yep, a deck to go around it. There's That's a little wonky tonight, but um, and so then I have two options. I can share this link, and it not only you know sent, brings them to MapGeo, it sends them to my exact view with my labels and markup, um, so that they can see exactly what I was showing there. Or so I can nice. print it as a PDF. Um, sort of two page sizes. A pop up view. You need to print, it doesn't do print for you. This sometimes can take a minute, but, or I can, you know, print it as a PDF and it gives me. some general information to scale so it, yeah. you know it does look somewhat yeah, professional yeah. in this output and the you know whether it's municipal staff or a resident or whoever is on here using this anyone can sort of make this their own map if they wanted to. Mm -hmm. so. Does it show the dimensions of the lot? Mm -hmm. Is that a possibility? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it depends on your data. Okay. Um, well, it's on the card, right? So. Right, or at least the acreage. Yeah, so we're getting area. Yeah, 
for dementia for the setback and everything will be helpful for filling for building for that's not on the tax card though, is it? <coughs> yeah. So I think that stuff there on the left is essentially coming from the, the assessing data. Uh, one last thing I want to point out uh, is you can change the base map as well. Um, so you can switch just to Google Satellite. You know, it will be fairly yeah, similar. Default. So, uh, now I can add that to their default base map. Um, we will have Google Satellite, you know, as another option and likely OpenStreetMap, just because they can have a different way to feel them. But there, just that feature can also be changed as well. So, so that's part of GEO in a nutshell. Do you have any initial questions or? Uh, so, <clears throat> so you're hoping to get sufficient subscribers this calendar year, is that correct? Um, for a thousand, and would be thousand dollars. So that's what we have to think about. Um, and you're going to leave us with a service agreement. I do have a few copies of people. We tried to make it just generally as straightforward as possible so that it is, you know, it's really the partial data, assessing data, and then we yep. need to take it right from there. So. All right. Are there other questions? It's, certain, it's kind of really, it, it's uh, useful information. It's pretty cool. It's pretty slick. It is, you've got a good price point. You can take that back to Cynthia. Yeah. You've got a good price point because it's actually coming in a little bit less than online tax cards to our assessing company, which doesn't yeah. have the rest right. of the yeah. data. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't have the rest of the data. It has right. no other data layers. It's, it's just, just the tax part. cards. Yeah. yeah. So. So, good, nice work, nice work, SRPC. Uh, it still doesn't, I don't know what we're going to, the board's going to do, yeah. but we'll talk about this. So. No, definitely. I've got your, yeah, I've got your email anyway, and, and uh, what, if you, you, have you been talking, have you been, is it just, is it just for the two of us, or is it in the board? I just emailed to you. Okay, so the, so if you want the whole board, it's just select board. Okay. No, no spaces, no doubt. Select board, add for all, and we're done. Okay. And check you so. Um, so you can send us something, and um, yeah, maybe if you do have a card uh, for my fellow board members. Oh, okay, I did. Oh, okay, I did. Okay, never mind. So, thank you. Okay, thank you. That's what I was trying to get. So you could, if you have a question, have to call. If you have a question or something. Anything else before I get your? Uh, no, I think we're good. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's right. I have to look my computer. So then, yep, so, you know, again, you, um, this is probably accessible if you want to go over and just, yeah. you know, get yeah. a feel for it yourself. And definitely if you have any questions, call or email. Um, All right. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Yes, we appreciate you coming in. Take care, Rachel. Thanks. All right. Let's see where, oh, look, I put the map on. Yeah, that's where we are. Oh, minutes. We haven't actually done minutes. Did you bring your cot with you? <laughs> All right. Any questions on the minutes or are we ready to accept them? All right. Okay. Minutes are good, Salman. Um, any community input? Okay. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's march through. Uh, department head business. Uh, I put minimum housing standards back up. Well, well, we have stuff to talk about. Yeah. Next week. Well, well, I thought we were not going to do it because there was a lot of stuff to talk about. Yeah. Okay. I thought that's because I ha I had some sub substantive questions and I thought we wouldn't have time to deal with them. Okay. Before we could do it, so I thought maybe with Tom next week. Oh, we're still going to discuss it next week. Yes, with Tom, some of the okay. questions. Now, I did leave my questions and comments in the document with you. Yes. And if there's time later on tonight, I'm happy to, to go over them with you. But, you know, exactly. but I'm just saying, I did leave them. And we're not having a public hearing next week. Right. Yes. Yeah. 
It just so have you being more talk. It, but Tom is coming to talk about septics. That, at yeah. the same time, we can review some of the some of these comments and yeah, questions. Yeah, but that we, I don't, we don't have to be able to sit, so. Correct. It's not a public hearing. It's just our meeting with Tom. That, yes. It wasn't noticed. It was never noticed, so we're good. Is everybody clear on that? Yeah. Okay. No public hearing, but we will be talking about it in the meeting with, with our building inspector, code enforcement officer. And thank you for this year. And all the formatting, because I see all the numbers were changed. Yeah, and that's a but um, yeah, you brought up some good points. I mean, it's just cut and paste. No, I understand. So some of the things that just struck me is well, we need to. Sure. I needed to understand really what we were saying, and uh, so thank you for for that feedback. But. So we'll we'll pop here. We'll move ahead with Tom hopefully, and, and um, take it from there. Uh, okay. So now we're at, in the transfer station. Transfer station position. So I think it did get advertised. We got advertised probably for um, a per diem Saturday. Okay. We did understand. I did yeah. think that it was also somebody who might be on call the other days. But you know, if you have somebody. Right, you can always ask. Right, <laughs> right, and they can say no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But mostly needed on Saturdays. Saturday. Perfect. So. Okay. So that got advertised. Mm -hmm. um, transition. So the, the search committee report. That was what we were doing in on public. The search committee uh, reported to us with the candidate uh, that we then um, interviewed, and at some point the board will be discussing that uh, in non public how we feel and how we want to proceed with that. But as, a, as public information, that's that's where that stands. So we're still very much in our transitional period. Uh, <clears throat> uh, vendor notification, if you want something like that to happen, that's still on the list if you want to talk to Caroline about who should be notified and how. Um, we did put out, I think, an ad for plow driver positions. Do you know? There here? is an mm -hmm. ad out right now. Um, I Double check to make sure she put it out to New Hampshire. If, I know it's on Indeed because I saw it on Indeed. I know it's on the nutritional municipal site, um, but I don't think she put it on the New Hampshire employment site. Okay. Um, Indeed says that it had one applicant. It hasn't come to me, so I'll have to ask Caroline where oh, okay. it went because Indeed will tell you like how many people applied for the right. position. It says one applied, but I don't know. I sent all the other ones for the other positions as right. well. So. Yeah, so I don't know. I'll have to ask her yeah. about that. Um, as far as the uh, transfer station goes, the hours switched today. Mm -hmm. um, mostly everybody knew. There was one comment on Facebook that they did not know. Um, but it was posted pretty worldwide. Um, they moved the little hut over. They're, they're going to use the little hut. Um, and um, they're going to, it's in the process of being worked on right now. They knew put a new door in, I think, fix the window frame, and do a, fit some insulation. Um, and so they're working on that right now. They also realized a uh, lapse in getting money here from Saturday. And so that incident um, where, um, so they're going to put uh, safety precautions um, in the highway building um, for uh, money that's used for Monday mornings, because between Saturday and Monday, the money has to be somewhere. So, um, and then um, I'm checking in with Wayne. Um, this week he's going to be weed whacking Main Street. Um, okay. I know, I'm so excited. Um, he's been doing, um, they're doing their own oil changes. Um, they're saving his money, not going to Dover for an oil change and stuff like that. They've been doing all that. They're getting ready and greasing up the machines and getting ready for winter and putting the club blades on. And, Everything like that. Thank you. Um, there was, you saw my email about um, Church Street today. So I've got some information about that. And well, let's talk. Is that the same property that we put the uh, sway on before? Is that, no. that White House on the corner no. of a. Uh, no. no, this is far, this is closer to where the, to the railroad tracks are. Oh, okay, so not on the other street. Yeah. Okay. It's my understanding. It's, if, yes, you it's turn, if you turn it on to Church from. One is the old bar, and the one is the one next to it. Was the email so why don't you just say what the issue was that you? So we got we got a phone call from the people that own the blue bill. Is it blue? The what used to be what the bar. used to be the bar. 
So um, they get a water runoff that comes off of Pleasant Street. And when I walked up with Wayne looking for the catch basin at the end of Pleasant Street, there is no catch basin. So it runs straight off of Pleasant, turns, and it runs right in front of there. And there is only a width of a sidewalk anyway. So there literally becomes a river that they can't access their own front door without stepping in this much of water or taking a big leap. So gotcha. um, future, future, we were looking at it and we're like, okay, there's probably going to have to be a catch basin here, and probably a catch basin probably pretty close to either in front of that house or right next to the parking lot. That parking lot, um, I didn't know that she was probably looking at it, but there's a deed that they, she has deeded to the lot behind them, has a deeded access right of way through that giant parking lot yeah. to the house behind them. So, and then to come to find out the house next to them that's on the corner of Pleasant and Church um, rents the land across the street from the railroad company, and that's how they get parking for that apartment. Oh, really? Oh, Because they just put down dirt, and I'm like, so, so I emailed Tom, and in the process of emailing Tom and calling the resident back and saying, you know, we're working on the issue, she informed me of that. So, so um, they're in the middle of a building permit as well, I believe. Is that so, Pleasant or Washington Street? Yeah. Washington, I think, Joe. Is that Washington? Washington. I think so. I'm trying to follow. I think, isn't it? Am I Washington? One street off? Is it, I think okay, so. Yeah, yeah. one street off. No, Washington I'm trying to keep up. Yeah. I'm slow. Yeah. So. It goes to Church, <laughs> Church. Pleasant, Washington. Washington, right? Oh, okay. okay, so it's Washington. So I was by your neck of the woods today. Okay. So there is no catch basin there. There is no catch basin there. I should have the called it all this time. And it does turn into a river there and floods the parking lot. My kids like to go down there and jump in the puddles. And there was a, it was all sidewalk and pavement there. And that yellow house on the corner has torn up their pavement and put in new sidewalk and steps and a new porch. And that's the house that's been doing a lot of construction. And they, they just laid dirt. So there was a sidewalk. Because mm -hmm. I see concrete there today. It used to be right, right from the road to the house. Okay. Wait, I need to go over and look at this. So that, that's a, that's a question, if that's a question, if you don't mind. That yellow house that you told us that was doing the construction where there was the, they were hauling the, the household stuff out of it. It was in the property. The dumpster, yeah. I think people abandoned some of their stuff, so. They tore up the sidewalk in front of their house? Yes. And the end of last week, so there, it was broken sidewalk there. Okay, it was still. And not pavement. Finished. And they pulled it all up. And now, last week, they made new pavement and huh. they put down the gravel at the end of last week. Anyone but it's not a permit? sidewalk, it's, it's, it's in process. Oh, it is. Yeah. Building permits in process? Tom is looking at. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Whether know. it talks about sidewalk lifting up, I don't know. But. Yeah, but there's no the, right now. It's well, right now, the, the issue is, is the kit. Kit. It's yeah. more of a lower. It's lower than the road. It's not a sidewalk. And there so should be where they pulled up some of the sidewalk is probably right on that corner is where the drain might have been at one point since it's so low. But I'm not sure. Well, I saw a circle, so I assume that was the catch basin that was clogged, and it's just a circle. So I don't. But I think the only catch basin. On Washington Street, maybe down near my house. On my property. Take a trip to Washington Street tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. So, so anyway, to to answer yeah. to to try to deal in with the short issue. term. Yeah. Um, apparently, we've placed gravel there in the past and on blue property. Um, the sportsman's Club. Yeah. Because of the erosion that happens. Mm -hmm. um, and I explained to her, well, this is not going to be an easy fix, and that catch basins are going to have to be installed and added to our probably 10-year road plan. Right. But in the meantime, and she was very grateful that um, for the response, because apparently it's been brought, she's called several times over the years. So I said, okay, well, here's our email if you need to contact us. So, yeah. so um, apparently there is one apartment and one resident. In the entire sportsman's mm -hmm. Okay. And but the, the short-term fix, I'm sorry, is, is gravel, is adding some 
So Wayne's going to put some stone down um, in the meantime, so it's not at least not a tripping hazard yeah. because it is a issue right there. All right. So and it is our right away. Well, thank you. Thank you for managing that. And again, I hope, I hope I think I come out halfway. It's not uh, anywhere near no, coherent, no. but typing from the phone is always Yeah, it's difficult. So let me make a note here to put to the 10 year growth plan. I think I did it on the post-it this morning, but just in case. Catch Basin. So we're thinking on uh, Washington. Uh, so it's Washington and Church. Washington Church. Church. Did the building inspector and fire chief ever make it in there to deal with the life safety issues? I don't know. But they had? But they both that. had? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. we had heard that there might have been a tent in there that wasn't supposed to be. I don't know. It's not, we can, a, uh, we can. It's not supposed to be. I mean, it's zoned for that, for sure. That's one of the uses it could be used for, but there were some issues. We can that check. may not have been resolved, so just. We can check. Maybe ask Tom. I mean, they, maybe they did go in. Yeah. Them. But I don't recall ever getting a report back. So okay. that doesn't mean we think that I don't remember. So. Okay. So that is. Anything else to add on that? Um, the fence that was installed at the transfer station, AAA is coming out and fixing it. So this is the one at the right top of the recycle. Yeah. And it's loose. Mm -hmm. right, so. so they are going to fix it. Okay. Yep. Um, and roadside mowing is happening next Monday. Um, Tuesday, um, Colin's coming in to maintenance of furnace at the highway department, and if Wayne is still roads. Townsend. Town oh, Townsend. Sorry. Okay. Townsend. Okay, Townsend. That's better. I was going to say. Mm. Sorry. That's all right. And I if uh, Wayne is still out roadside mowing with the contractor, then Russ is going to let them into the roads. So Excellent. Wayne Beach is in And um, Norm has been on call. Luckily, he has not been called. Yay. Um, but I check with him every weekend to make sure he's in, on call, and I let the police chief know. That's Thank excellent. You. Thank you so much. So with regard then to the transfer station, we might as well talk about the project, the transfer station improvement project, which had a little bit of money left. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a PO in there for a gate that yeah. we can talk about. But we need to, so how are we going to manage what, what appear to be incidental a lot of incidental cost to get these sheds up to snuff. It would be nice to use the, I mean, this is, these are clearly transfer station improvements, and we've got, the, we've got that money. Mm -hmm. And so if there's a way to sort of keep all of those things together so that we can transfer money from the, the warrant mm -hmm. and to cover that so it doesn't come out of our operating budget. Correct. So we want to... You know, right now they're looking at about five hundred dollars minus the heating expense. I think what we need to do is just whenever, because some of these are going to be individual and they're not going to rise to PO level, okay. and a PO is to a vendor, so this isn't to a a vendor. So, but if you could make sure that whatever the receipt is or whatever the mechanism is that they're doing it, that they clearly say transfer station improvement. Okay. Okay. Or, sh you know, something so that we can recognize them and then Caroline can note them and then we can, then we can put them all together when we think we've got okay. when they're done. Does that sound? Yep. Very easy. Super. Yep. All right. Anything else? Is this the P? We might as well, we, we want to talk about it now? So here's the, this is the PO for <coughs> the, the big fence, you know, across the front of the transfer station. Uh, Go ahead. Well, let me move it. I have some questions. All right. Why don't you move it? I'm just going to ask questions. Move purchase order, uh, purchase order number 1271 to AAA fence for one galvanized chain link fence gate for entrance to the transfer station for 3500 Second. All right. So discussion. You, told me, you probably told me a dozen times now, Jody, but I need to hear it one more time. I'm sorry. I'm thick. What does it look like? It goes, because my concern was it was not just a gate, right? It does go it's into the woods, right? So people can't just drive around it, right? Correct. Okay. It's going to be very large and tall, like what you see in front of the salt. Salt, salt shed. Okay. But it's going to slide. Okay. So apparently they just put one in Berwick, which I didn't know they did. But I don't know where their key is, but. I, 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 I heard, heard they did. Transfer station. I just drove by yesterday. 
Oh. It's on, you know where Samuel Falls Nursery is? Mm -hmm. So just like, oh, yeah. like mm -hmm. maybe 500 feet? Oh, maybe. Okay. It's just about, maybe a little more than that, but it's on the same side of the road, but so okay, I'll go so, look at it again. Okay. So from what I read and what I'm gathering, it's a sliding okay. gate that will be wide and into the woods. And does that mean a, a, we can't stop a ATV? No, no, but I know, but... For a resident to... Or a pole Right. Okay. For a resident to throw away the trash, they're going to be... In the woods it, it sends a message, right? I mean, it yeah. sends that right. you're not supposed to be in walking right. underneath. You're not supposed to be in yeah. here this time of day. We're not open, right. and I think it it's, sends a clearer message than right. you know what is a really easily navigated. Just let it go. Yeah, exactly. Take it off. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. But do you want us? Do you want to take? No, a look? no. I mean, I I could. I, I know what the sliding detail looks like. I, I can go look at it. My concern was really that it was going to have wings to it, so. It, couldn't just mm -hmm. walk around this giant gate at the first, you know. It oh, I see. Be, you just walk be, around. It wouldn't be any more effective than what we have now. Why would, why would we spend the money? Which, yeah, it's going to go from the salt shed to gate. So, to install. So, that's going to be 44 feet. From salt shed. Salt, salt shed across. To, mm -hmm. to so it's like a four story building on its side, a little bit more, four and a half story building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as long as it has, it has the stone star, it goes over a little bit. I'm good with that. I've that that was, my understanding. Really was, yeah. it was my understanding. It's all 15 feet of galvanized chain link from gate to the woods. Perfect. Okay. That's so all then it's part. 15 feet to the woods. Yeah. Okay. It's all six foot high with one. One foot of barbed wire. <laughs> okay, whatever. I don't, that's fine. If they're foolish enough to climb it with the barbed wire and just walk around through the woods, fine. I don't want to encourage either, so. But, yeah, it sounds good, thank you. Yeah. And this would sure come out of the transfer station. So, do, I mean, do you, want, do you want me to call the question? Go for it. We're ready to go. If, if not, I can rescind. If you don't want to do it now, I'll rescind. Motion, but uh, I'm, we're I'm, ready to go. We're good. I mean, I'm, I'm good. good. I'm, I'm, I'm question. I think we're ready. Right. Huh? All right. We'll call the question. All those in favor of purchase order one two seven one for galvanized fence, say yes. Yes. Uh, or aye. aye. Aye works. Aye. I will say There's aye as well. Say yes. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> Don't screw me. I know. <laughs> See, Tana, we're just really sorry at getting started. I think that's why. I don't know why. I know, I know, me too. So don't ask. Okay. I'm sorry. It won't happen again. All right. Excellent. Thank you. And it does say transfer station improvement project on, on the Yes, it does. Okay. Perfect. All right. Excellent. Uh, any, uh, let's see. Police aren't here to talk about the shed removal. Um, all right. Town administration. Project updates. Culverts. <coughs> So the change order for the extension of time is fully processed and executed. We did that. Uh, the pay rec, uh, you know, Hoyle Tanner had some questions. They're waiting for um, Parker to answer them. So there's, okay. there's no pay rec. Now this is the, the document that we gave any one of us the uh, permission to sign once, right. once Hoyle Tanner had uh, said yes. We should have a uh, task order, Jody. Yes. Is somewhere in there if you could uh, find that? All right, so this is the task order that for the construction phase services during construction of Willie Street, Pine Street, and Lower Mill. And this is the one with the great big price tag on it. And it actually came in at $47,379. So uh, let's move this and I'll. I'll I'll talk a little bit about all the goodies. Oh, okay. no, I don't know. I just I'll sorry. Move. Please. Fine. Doesn't matter. <laughs> I'll move uh, the acceptance of proposed task order number nine on call general engineering services uh, with uh, oil tanner. Second. Okay. So I had rebudgeted the warrant article budget, but the project budget is it's uh, so that it would encompass forty five thousand worth of uh, these kinds of services. And this is coming in at uh, 47000 So 
uh, a couple of things. I mean, this was their conservative estimate, meaning you know they tried to make sure it covered absolutely everything. Right. And they're going to try to use the junior engineer as much as possible. Good. And you know we have some options. One to to get the uh, overage out of our operating budget. You know to consider using the, the transportation money from the state. So. Um, yeah. So. Uh, and in the future, for projects that require this level of oversight, sort of like the engineering here, you know, when you need an engineer on site to, to make sure that if the project has sufficient complexity, that someone with that level of expertise needs to be there, they're going to have yeah. to budget it. So that's all I have to do. Okay. Uh, other questions or comments? I will call the question and all those in favor say aye. 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 And just to give you an update, I was there last, I don't know if you've been visiting the sites. I was, uh... I drive over the street almost daily now. Oh, good. Well, that was, that was, that was, yeah, that, that was <laughs> done except for the top coat. <laughs> That's done except for the top coat. Right. The, um, the lower mill, which is the one that I had been losing sleep over yeah. because of the underground tank, mm -hmm. they did, in fact, uh, and I knew this at our last meeting, I just chose not to tell us then, because why worry? They did uh, find, they, they could smell a little bit of petroleum mm -hmm. or something. Very, sure. very slight. But they tested it, and everything was within, uh, oh, it, it was not, and this is an independent uh, yeah, sure. firm that does it. It's not, it's not Royal Tanner, it's right. not Parker, it's not the town, it's an independent uh, testing company. And so it passed muster, it, the lo levels were very, very low, and so they're able to, to put the fill back in. Uh, when I was there, la uh, so that, that had passed, we passed that risk, and I just went thinking they were really going to be almost done. And they, are, they sort of were almost done, but they found some pipes that traverse as you get closer to the catch basin, you know, coming up to the one country cider, sure. they found some pipes that were not labeled by Dig Safe, that were not on anybody's map. Because you know, this is like a this is an old site. It's an old site. It's an old site. And so they were they were there, uh, they called Aaron, they were trying to figure out what these were, what they were gonna do. And and I said, Okay, I'll probably get we'll probably get a call from Aaron, but we didn't. And I went back, you know, a day or so later and they were now up to the catch basin. So they whatever it was, they figured it out. I saw a cutout somewhere else, so they must have must have we'll find out at some point. They must have figured out what it was and it seemed okay because they were still working. Sure. Now they're going to Pine Street, and actually Pine Street is probably the most complicated of all of them come to find out because it's the deepest one. Mm -hmm. It's a very deep. The water continues to run, so they have to you know, they have to figure out a way to contain the water. Right. Um, and it occurred to me that the fun, the Salmon Falls run was going to be right. on that day. So I did touch base with Emily Leach, who's one of the organizers of the race. She was yeah. the one who... Totally yeah, okay, good. So they're, they're able to redo the route because it actually is going to... And everything uh, worked out with the police, do we know? Above, uh, he didn't. He didn't. He must. He must be okay with the rerouting because I didn't hear anything, and we both copied him on those emails. So, okay. so he knows of the change. Yeah. So they should be there. Um, they should be there at Pine Street sometime this week. And that's that's. And we'll uh, hope for the best. Any questions on any of those uh, projects? Okay. Uh, well, tax rate. We're in, in easily into tax rate season. So the MS1 is the report that we provide to the DRA on our assessed values. And we can't do that until our assessor does his, finishes his job. And he's wrapping that up and uh, should be done sometime this week, I believe. So then we'll run the MS1, which is one of the things we have to do. 
We have a brand new form this year. We are so lucky. It's called the MS-50, and it's a report of our bonding uh, activity. Oh, yeah. So I talked to DRA today just to make sure I really understood exactly what they needed on this. And so uh, I'll, uh, I'm going to work on filling it out. It, Beverly has to sign it, so I'll go over it with her and assuming that she's fine with it. It's just, where did you get the authority to bond? We got it from town meeting, you know, on this date. How much you borrow it, what rate, what was the date of issue, and Michelle's, Michelle Clark from DRA says most of this is on the opinion from the um, bond council. So I'll just kind of look at that and borrow it. So we're working on the MS, we'll be working on the MS1, the MS50, and I'm doing the revenue estimates, which has to happen at this time of year. And things are looking, uh, things are looking okay. I had some moments of angst because I thought, well, what happens if we're not borrowing as much as we said we were going to borrow? We may not buy this truck this year, you know, that, and uh, they're, they're still counted on the revenue side <clears throat> as anticipated, and it gets um, mediated through the financial statement that the auditor does. So, so we're good. And otherwise, you know, we had some ups and downs in revenue, but uh, I'm going to go back and look at it again with the information that we got from Michelle just today. But uh, I think we're, we're, I think we're, I think we're okay. Again, I need to look at it again, but I think we're okay. Uh, motor vehicles, uh, motor vehicles are up. Building permits are down from what we expected. Uh, you know, the, the wreck, uh, the, the summer wreck, summer camp didn't bring in as much as we thought, but it's more detailed work. So, you know, so things have sort of even themselves out, I think we're okay. All right, um, resolution. Oh, good. So, uh, so we received from our attorney, uh, just within the last couple of days, I'm about to bring it up here, um, a, you know, we've been working on the boundaries between the city of Dover and the town of Rollinsford on Oak Street. And so we hired um, McEnany to do the survey. He has provided the final survey and signed it and done all of those things. And now the next step is for both of the municipalities to issue a resolution. So what I will do, I think, is just read the resolution. Is it printed in the thing? We should have a printed copy. I'm hoping Caroline printed it out. Is there a resolution in there? Yeah, my Well, let's, all right, let's try this. Yes, so what we can do is read the resolution. Uh, assuming that it all goes well, we will approve the resolution, and we will just have the minutes say that we are virtually signing it today, and we will come in tomorrow to sign it. And we have to sign it tomorrow because it's going, no, no, we don't have to sign it tomorrow. Just soon. We don't have to sign it. I was thinking of something else. Well, I'll be here tomorrow for meeting, so. Okay. So we'll have a little bit with Caroline, and then uh, we'll sign it as of today, the day that we pass the resolution. All right. So resolution of the Town of Rollinsford Select Board. Whereas the Town of Rollinsford and the City of Dover share a common boundary, and whereas a portion of the boundary generally runs northeasterly along Oak Street from the intersection with Broadway, across Portland Avenue, 
to the head of Fresh Creek, the boundary, and whereas there has been a lack of clarity on the pre precise location of the boundary, and whereas Rollinsford and Dover jointly retained the services of New Hampshire licensed land surveyor Kevin McEnany of McEnany Survey Associates, Inc., to research the location of the boundary and create a recordable plan of the boundary, the plan, and whereas the town of Rollinsford agrees with the location of the boundary as shown on the plan, and whereas the town, in conjunction with the city of Dover, wishes to acknowledge and memorialize the location of the boundary, consistent with New Hampshire RSA Chapter 51. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the select board chair and the select board that the town of Rollinsford acknowledges that the location of the boundary between the town of Rollinsford and the city of Dover, running northeasterly along Oak Street from the intersection with Broadway, across Portland Avenue to the head of Fresh Creek, is as shown on a recordable plan of the boundary prepared by McEnany Survey Associates, dated November 18th. 2016. And further be it resolved, consistent with and pursuant to the requirements of RSA Chapter 51, specifically RSA 51-3-5, the Town of Rollinsford gives notice to the City of Dover to perambulate this boundary and to set appropriate marks and bounds consistent with the McEnany Survey Associates, Inc., dated November 18, 2016. And further be it resolved, that the select chair or her designee is appointed to work with the City of Dover to notice and or otherwise schedule the perambulation and setting of appropriate marks and bounds, to sign a return of the perambulation and to record and file the return consistent with the requirements of RSA Chapter 51. That's the resolution. I move that we sign the resolution. Establishing the boundary between the city of Dover and the town of Rollinsford along Oak Street and Fresh Creek. Second. And I will call the question. I know. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right, so we have uh, sort of virtually agreed to this. We are virtually signing it, and we will physically sign it as soon as possible, preferably tomorrow, once we have a printed copy. And then we will return this to uh, our attorney. And at some point, we will actually do this perambulation. I can only be here after 5 tomorrow. Pardon? I can only be here after 5 tomorrow. Yep. Can you, e can you email her that so that she knows? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, I've got to read it so I'll sign that All right. So. Thank goodness. That one's so Yeah. Fun. How about that, huh? It's been on the agenda for a while. Yeah. Uh, guidelines on building of Class 6 roads. Is, is there anything we want to say about the public hearing? Do we think if I bring a printed copy, I don't have a printed copy uh, with our required signatures, but we could. Um, yeah, printed copy. Is that a place for us to send me this? It's clean, I think, right on this one. If we're ready, Nick, do we? So. So it's, it's up to us. We, we don't have to act tonight. We have the public hearing. We've been reading about this. What? Do we want to think about the 600 feet? I mean... What, what is it? Go ahead. I just want to... Is that the magic number? I don't know. I don't have, I don't have a problem with it. I don't have a problem but, with it. Okay. Do you have a problem with 600 feet? No, that's what it... That's what's written in the hard road travel book. That, is that where it comes from? As like a sort of a guideline for as far as one could pretty much? Okay. That's where it comes from. want to go further yeah. than that. Mm. With a reason, I think a couple of people in this. Right. All right. Then I, I move that we accept the guidelines for, uh, what are we calling it? Okay. Guidelines for the select board regarding construction on class six roads. Second. Any further discussion or comments? I really appreciate all the people that came in tonight. I thought it was a really good uh, discussion. I was interested to hear them and the concerns. And so, yeah, they and much. It's much more helpful than you know when, when no one shows up. So yeah, I, I mean, it, was, it was a very fruitful conversation. Yes. There were several people that had legitimate concerns because they abut one of those roads. And somebody who might and, want to and is thinking about how it works with his own property. Once the conversation progressed, they understood that might be, you know, they, they seem to accept it. And that, that Mr. Van Duvel 
Alan was, I think, pretty against it when he first walked in the room, he seemed like it. And then once we talked some more, and he's like, oh, well, I can support this. So it's, it's good to have guidelines. It's good to have a set of something mm -hmm. to follow. Yeah. <laughs> not I, just stick I, your finger in the air and go, yeah, okay, I guess we'll do it today and not tomorrow. I, mean, I, I appreciate them. Yeah. All right, ready to call a question? Yeah. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right, we're all going to sign this. I gotta make another copy. Okay. Well, I'm gonna scan it and put it on. Why? I want it. Of course you can. Sorry. Oh, I'm gonna be there. Unless I actually buy yeah, that laptop, my wife. So what? My wife keeps telling me I need to buy. I want to make sure. Have a post it. Did you say uh, scan yeah. and email to me? I'll, I'll I know where to file it. And then we should make a. Uh, you know, we just start a new. It's just a suggestion. We should start a new uh, thrilling binder. It just says um, select for guidelines. I I appoint you to handle sure, our I'll paper. The paper version of. Well, because you know, we have a. We have a shelf uh, in there. Yes, I, mean, I, 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 I point you. Do you uh, object to it? No, I put it off. I don't no. want you to handle, I can handle the paper. Go buy one of that. <laughs> However, you do. My donation. Carte blanche. <laughs> my in kind donation to the town will be purchased on the three months. Like my MSD book. <laughs> right? Oh, well, that's done, by the way. This floor is done. Excellent. Perfect. All right. Um, <clears throat> Schedule budget workshops. It's that time of year. I don't know. Huh? I need, um, my calendar isn't 100% up to date. Um, for the next month. I've got some things that I talked about yesterday that I need to put in school. So I hate to. Would a Saturday morning? I don't know yet. No, no, okay. So, I have some can, I, can I, I tentatively suggest that we do a first one? On either uh, the 27th in the evening, which is a Wednesday, or or the 30th Saturday morning, and then you can check your calendars and let me know. 27th of what? September. The the Saturday morning would probably be easier for me, but then I want to stay Oh, definitely because Kate's away. The 26th and 27th will work. So. So well, the 27th definitely won't work, and okay. the 30th I will still be on payment. So. Oh, that's right. I'll okay. come in. <laughs> I don't want Probably the, the most enjoyable meeting of our 10, right? No, but seriously. I'll be the only one enjoying the meeting. Right. Seriously, though. I mean, I don't want to schedule it if you... The uh, 30th, I will not be ready. Yeah, okay. So, so... I can't do the 7th. But if you guys want to... Well, I, can, I don't know. I can listen by a voicemail. Like, if you do a voice call. Voice conference call. Yeah. Yeah. Without I'll chime in when I have to. And we can make sure that you get the spreadsheet that we're working from. Yeah. Does that work? Yeah. Fine. Sure. Right. I don't. Well, I'll be. Well, the time does. Four is days out, so. We we'll can try. I'll let we'll you try know it. Friday night. Okay. Go for it. All right. So what time do you want to do this? Nine a.m. Nine. Yeah, because Scott will have brought Zoe to her game at nine, so I'll be home alone anyway. So we're going to do nine thirty. At 9 o'clock a.m., Jody will call in. How long do you want to schedule the first one for, do you think? Two or three hours? Well, a solid two. I'll just say something. Really yeah. Okay. Okay. Do you want to just call me from whatever phone you want to call from? Yeah, yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll be, we, yeah, we'll be in touch. So, so next week you won't be here, is that correct? Is that, we're already I will that? be here on the 25th. Okay. It's the second. I probably won't be here. Oh, okay, got it. And then the ninth, we're off for Columbus Day, yep. and I should be back by the sixteenth. Okay, all right. And the sixteenth, I'm uh, in Washington for that week. Yep, I already have my gone, so I have to be back by then. So so right. Or we'll just cancel. Sorry. Right. So. Mm -hmm. No, I'm oh, sorry. It's been since after we have schedules. All right. So we'll tentatively. Think of doing that. Then there's also the following. You somebody said they the couldn't do the seventh. Okay. Yeah. 
that. You've already said that. Oh, I won't be here. I won't be here. All right. So don't feel guilty. So I don't have to Stop feeling guilty. I don't have to divulge. I'm going to see PJ Masks. Um, I don't even know what that is. Well, I, anyone who has children under six I don't even know what that is. sympathizes oh. with me, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Please tell me where it is. Like, I would love to go to that. It's at the Wang Center, a Wang Theater in Boston, whatever it's called now. It, uh, it changes all the time, but I know the building needs She's you. obsessed with this. It's, a, it's Disney or whatever. PBS, I don't know, whatever it is. All right. So that's the project workshop. First one. Okay. Uh, 14 votes. Yeah, let's 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 do it. Is it open for everybody? Oh, mm, yeah, it's not open for me. <laughs> All right. Well, then, if you the want to schedule weeknights, I'm really gonna have to wait until yeah. next week. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Hmm. And I think like the next, I don't know, either the 21st or the 28th, I'm going to Pennsylvania. Yeah, we'll have to start. Probably have meeting. Let's see how far we get well, on the first one. Just for an overnight, though. Yes, so. Joni? Mike, are there any mornings? Monday morning? See, I don't know yet. To go on mornings? I don't know. Let's see. Do you have Mondays off? Well, I'll, I'm going to be recovering, so I'm out of work for six weeks. Okay. So, after the first two weeks of so payments. The, so, when can we, yeah, so <laughs> starting from. Um, so, the second I can't do. So, so let's look. So we're going to try to meet on the 30th. Mm -hmm. I am out of town for a bit oh, the, around the Columbus Day. Okay. So that's why the seventh. Columbus Day we're not meeting, right? Right. That's, right. that's that why I'm. Be open. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but the week of the the week of the 16th, if we have some early mornings, Mike, that you might not be able. That whole week. On the 16th. Come back the 19th. Okay. Well, I'll see what's that. Uh, okay, looks like I come back. I come back late on uh, uh, the 18th, actually. Well, if you evening flight on the if 18th. you wanted to do something Friday morning or Saturday, did, was the 21st out for somebody? Um, actually, I. Why do I have an SRPC meeting on the night, on the 21st at 9 a.m.? Say this, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't fun. think they meet on. I have a meeting. meeting. That day, though? No. I think you do it on Friday. Saturday? Fr Friday morning. Yeah. Oh. You do it Friday morning. I put it in wrong. So, Saturday, actually, Saturday well, would be a lot easier. SRPC to go home. Meeting. You probably mentioned it and I put it in my phone. Oh, maybe SRPC she, is doing something. Maybe there is some. Jody was willing to be the backup for tech. So maybe they're meeting. Oh, I don't know. It's on the 19th? The 20th, 20th, 20th is, the, is the one that I go to. Oh, well, I don't know. All right. Tell you what, <laughs> let's get, get your cal yeah get your calendar sorted out, and then we'll revisit this. And you'll be and you'll be here next Monday, right? Yeah. All right. Good. Keystone cops here trying to schedule something. Sorry. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna plug along here. Uh, DMV closure. Uh, it the town hall is gonna be closed. Andrea is taking vacation days, so uh, it will, and they're they're advertising it as broadly as they possibly can. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, there's a piece of land that needs to come out of land, uh, out of current use, and I believe there's a letter for us to sign, as well as it has to be, this is the thing that has to be orchestrated with the invoice that Andrea is, needs to build. So if there's something to Mr. Phipps. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, so okay. So here's the dear Mr. Phipps, this letter's to follow up. There's, and there's the, the actual okay. warrant. On the letter sent July 17th, notifying you of the violation of current use regulations taking place at your property located at 20 Church and Wedding, you met with a lot of others. Since that time, Chad Roberts from our assessing firm, Avatar, and I met with you and Paul Connolly to explain the restrictions on land on, under the designation of current use as set, as set forth by state law. We hope that conversation was helpful to you in understanding the situation. The land has not been brought back to qualifying standards, nor have we received any indication of your intention to do so. Therefore, we would regret to enclose with this letter a bill for land use change tax in the amount of $12,800. Again, we would like to reiterate our regret in sending you this news in the bill. However, we are bound by the laws governing current uses set forth by the state. Yeah. I like the way it's working. Are we good with that? Really good with that, 
and I decide it's it's awful. But you know we have to we have to be fair. Yes, we have to sign a warrant. Uh, yes, we have to sign a warrant as well. I'm assuming we're signing. Yes. Signing yes. A letter, so. Yes. Exactly. And there's a second one that we're going to cover in non-public at the end of the meeting. Yeah. Okay. Is you still again? There's a non-public yeah, because it's the legal. Yeah, we're just trying to figure it out on the agenda. What does it say? Well, it says current use. Is that the one? No. Yeah, the next one, H. Uh, yes, it's current use, it's, it's Mr. It's the Meekins. Yes. We need to review that in the public. Okay. Oh, now we have a really good one for 8.35 at night. Uh, projector placement? Uh, we, we can if we, if we promise to, to talk about it, reach an agreement next Monday. Because sure. Richard? Are the two areas we talked about this morning oh, when we came out. Yes, okay. yes. In okay. passing. We then need what to make you like. Huh? Then what would you like? What would I like? I would just like a decision. I don't care what it is. Okay. Huh. Then fine, I want it over there. Where do you want it? Right. Right. Fine by me. Don't matter me. All right. Can we take the whiteboard down and stick it up right over there? there? Put the whiteboard there. Yeah. And I'll find another place for the clock. No, I don't know. I'm a deal breaker now. We'll move the clock. All right. I'm fine by me. All right. Doesn't work anyway, so. So. Um, um, but the whiteboard, though, I want to know over there so I can see what time it is. Yeah, right. um, that's it there. Yeah. We need to use it for the whiteboard. It does take it up a little bit. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 We decided we don't need the screen, just the whiteboard. Yes. The, what? the screen can stay where it is for now. Well, it may not be able to. It might have to come down. Yeah. It but, may not be able to. But either way. I mean, it could still be put over there if we needed to. And put the, that set up on that wall. I think, right? mm -hmm. If we need to. Yeah. yeah. I don't think it's going to make a difference. Because that was three inches shorter than the smart board. This one's the side was? Yeah. I don't remember what the dimensions were now. About like 76 maybe inches. Okay. Thank you. I will so let uh, the Richards know because um, Richard Ford is going to get help. Richard Fogarty is going to get help from Dick Fortier. Dick Fortier. Yes. Yeah. At the school. Further complicated. Oh, okay. <laughs> Richard is also helping keeping the supplies on track over at Awesome. At Beautiful. At Thanks, at thank you. Thanks, All Thanks. right. Uh, tabling New Hampshire DOTL rolling bridge. Yep. Review transfer station fees. Did, did we, are we just proceeding as. Is that still. I, I didn't remember if we were I still. We weren't changing anything. Okay, no. so that. So yeah. I, I just forgot Position. to take it away. Okay, remove mm -hmm. it. Oh. Yes. Because well, uh, this seems to happen perennially. Perennially. I can't speak this evening. Um, we always want to review it, but then we say, oh, we've run out of time. It's too late in here to do it. Maybe we should incorporate it as part of our public planning process. I can't believe I'm saying this to include, create more work. But, and then with a, a date certain for it to go into effect the following year. You, know, to, like, you don't have to say it's going to go into effect this year. No, we can certainly talk about it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Okay. We don't lose sight of it. It's what kind of process are you doing? You know, budget process? Yeah. Okay. So we, we, we keep punting. Yeah. No, I, 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 we got to do something eventually. I so. know that. I just couldn't understand. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. You were mumbling. I probably yeah. was. I'm sorry. Yes, you were. All right. Anything to say on the historical committee? We're meeting tomorrow night. Okay. 7 um, o'clock. Excellent. Right here. Joint loss. They're meeting in a couple of weeks, as I just okay. said. Um, job descriptions are due today. Okay. Uh, transfer station agents. Um, Russ just sent them over to me, so I'll forward them over to the chief. And then they go into the chief's hands to put them up. And then joint loss will start reviewing them in um, three weeks or so. Okay. Excellent. Awesome. Uh, welfare, uh, we're having trouble scheduling budget workshops right now, so I'm not sure how, what to say about welfare, but... Table for now? Yep, table for now. Okay. 
uh, standing items, board member activities and updates. What are you up to, Mike? My, uh, uh, historical for you tomorrow. I think that's it for the week. Okay, Jody? Okay. I've just been checking in with Highway. You've been busy, yes. <laughs> like nothing major. Yes. Just, yeah. you know. <laughs> so they're they are doing a great job. Everybody is stepping up. I can't. They're they're doing a wonderful job. Russell's stepping up. Um, Mr. Turgeon is stepping up. Wayne is awesome. I've only dealt with Mike a few times, but he's very helpful. Mike um, Dion is coming back for plowing, so he's been a useful tool, and he will be a useful tool to whoever we hire. Mm -hmm. um, oh, our third transfer station, um, Paul, is prior DOT plowing. Uh -huh. He is willing to plow during the day. Oh, he's the one. I thought it was Wayne. It's Paul. Paul. Uh -huh. Actually, they his... vote for it because Wayne, when he started his career, he did plow with DOT. He did, is, but he does he not want to do it. Do it. <laughs> um, but Paul is willing, but his only request is that he's retired. He wants to be able to plow his wife out in the mornings and make sure she's able to plow in the morning. And he and I get that. I said, if we could get you during the day to give them a break, that would be awesome. awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, perfect. Easily. Excellent. Um, so, so, we just have to discuss yeah. how we change his pay scale because it would change from department. So, I, I actually have learned a little bit about that because Great. I needed to get some hourly rates, you know, for budgetary purposes. And so, I saw some of the paychecks records. Yeah. And, I, and I saw some people with more than one rate. And so, so she can, one, one can say so many hours at this rate, so many hours at that rate. So we've had some people who, like the transfer station, when they do transfer station, they're that rate. When they do highway department, they're another rate. Mm -hmm. So we can do the same thing for, you know, when he is plowing, he will get the plow rate. Wonderful. And he, he has the CDLs and all that jazz. Awesome. That's and awesome. Lots of history. I love plowing. the idea of having a pool. Because, mm -hmm. you, you know, you can never have too many, I think. And, so, so if our road agent is willing to do night work, we have people that are willing to do day work so they can go nap and yep. get back to their job. Yep. We, still need, we still need more, though, don't we? We still need more. Okay. All right. So we're so still looking. We need two more. All right. At least. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And definitely the other two who were here last year are both, are both no's. They are no's right now. Um, Mike Dion offered to reach out to both of them. Right. I emailed him. Um, or I called him the other day. I have not heard a response back, so I don't know. But he did offer to reach out to both of them because he enjoyed both working with both of them. All right. Well, that would be helpful if we could get even just one. one board. All right. So that's that. I have a um, stormwater committee, the Seco Stormwater Coalition meeting this week. And um, and just so everybody knows, on Saturday is Family Fun Day. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, That's also what I'm doing on Saturday. Yep, from week. noon to through the spaghetti supper and uh, fireworks, right? Yeah. Okay, and I'll have my little my, my little viruscape thingy. Thing, right? Yeah, grow corn. That's Yes, That's but I'm doing corn. stormwater demonstrations. And we're raffling off a rain barrel again. Nice. Did you win it last year? This yeah. time we're not, it's not a free raffle, it's a buck a, buck a ticket. Yeah, but I'm giving some time to take a stop by. Oh, we're just a buck. Yeah, just buy buy it. Don't do it now, please. Yeah. You feel like I'm bad with paper? I'll talk to you. She's worse with money. <laughs> worse with money. Great. <laughs> so, it's paper. It's paper, yeah. There you go. <laughs> that would be lovely, Michael. Okay. Um, so that's what's happening this week. And I guess uh, building permits and then correspondence. Yeah. And First thing before I forget, I don't sort of forget, that we need to um, pass out to Jody. The card for Dr. Mike down at the Village Fed. Oh. Just thanking him for, um, Kate did it, Kate Nesman did it on me. So, uh, thanking him for buying those signs. Oh, pick awesome. up after your dogs. And thanks to, um, to Wayne for the month. Uh, well, Jack was going to, so I, I don't know. Oh, I, Jack. Think, I, don't, I, don't I don't know. I know he was putting up stop signs. I think it was Wayne, I think. Okay. Wayne and, and Mike, maybe, but yeah, thanks to them for part of one. So yes, I've done some comments about the more. So the first building permit we have is 2017 dash. Hmm, I think that's four or five. Someone's crossed out and. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, it's hard to say, but I would guess four. Okay, we're going to go 104. 
No, I guess I could just look in here and see if there's another Yeah. One. Just to be safe. It's got to be, it's because the next one's 103. So, permit 2017-104, 494 Silver Street. They are installing one of the Vernai um, space heaters in their dining room, it says. Uh, so it must be hard wired, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be a $90 fee. Let me read by Mr. Clark. Next thing we have is a certificate of occupancy for 34 Wentworth Street, also known as Lot 8. Uh, $50 Next is purchase order. Uh, yeah, send to go home. Building permit 2017 101, 484 Portland Avenue. Uh, they are installing an HVAC, uh, part of an HVAC system. Hydro air system with boiler and 50 gallon indirect zone of, I guess, of radiant in garage uh, for $10,500. Fee is Twenty seventeen dash zero nine eight B because uh, the first one was voided that they fi they um, filled out. I'm not sure why. It's four seventy Church Street. It's electrical. That's the house. Oh. Four seventy. Tom, Tom was reviewing the oh, four seventy well. is the yellow house on the corner. Well then. Their electrical people were waiting for the building permit. Okay, well then, this one is at least for the electrical. It sounds like they're doing other stuff, but Tom's on top of this, so that's fine. So we'll grant that. I don't think I need that long. It's $90. It's $90, I'm sorry, yes. The next is 2017 dash. Are you ready, Simon? 2017 dash 097, 100 Roberts Road. They are installing a 36,000 BTU Mitsubishi condenser and three duct air handler. Uh, Putting in central air. Um, Mr. Clark has reviewed a fee of $175. Oh, it's so a copy. You yeah. You can't really see. Anywho, how are we going to go? Oh. Now we've got enough. Part two. Uh, so, I'm sorry, that other, that 470 Church Street, Sammy, mm -hmm. it was 2017-098-B. Yeah. Now we have a 2017-098-A. Huh. Okay. Um, it looks like they are putting on a new roof, doing some renovations to the uh, tune of about $24,000. Mr. Clark has a fee at $265. Getting down towards the end. Next we have 
Permit 2017-091-283 Clement Road. They are putting in a um, roof mount to solar array to the fee of $145. Staying within the existing footprint, I would say they're smaller or whatever. Is there a fee? Yeah, I'm sorry, yes, $125. Purchase order number 1304 to Inclusion Solutions for the town clerk for uh, the purchase of that stand up multi voting booth uh, for $540.61. I think she talked to you about that, didn't she? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you want a second? Second. Sorry. All right. Any questions or comments? I wasn't aware that I had been budgeted for. Mm -hmm. and she showed us that she had budgeted for it, so I think that was our question before. It was, it was budgeted for $700, yeah, and so we that. have not rebudgeted out of that line, so it, it is still there. Sure. Any other questions or comments? No. Right. Uh, we uh, comment that we, yes. If we don't buy it, if right now we still have it, we would have to send it back and paper shipping to send it back. Yes, so. correct. So. Just, just yeah. bring it back. Use yeah. again. Yes. Right. So All right, so if we're ready, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 And the second, last thing I have in my little folder here is a letter to Mr. Cassianelli of Days Auto Salvage. Oh, I got something here, too. Okay. You got something, too? Yeah. Is it from the state? Yeah, yeah, mine's from the state, saying that mm -hmm. he had to be in compliance as of two days ago, three days ago. Perfect. So this letter makes a lot more sense. Uh, Mr. Dear Mr. Joining us, Rita. Dear Mr. Cassianelli, uh, this letter is in connection with your application for the renewal of your motor vehicle junkyard license. As the license expired June 30th, 2017, you are currently in violation of the zoning ordinance of the town of Rollinsford. In addition, we are aware of the outstanding issues regarding your lack of response to the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services Best Management Practices Compliance Inspection Report. The town will be unable to proceed with processing your renewal application until the issues are resolved. Please contact the town office within 10 days to discuss the situation and to establish a schedule to bring the property into compliance. Sincerely, Suzanne Hewitt, Chairperson, Rollinsford Select Board. Okay, well, unless there's an objection, I will sign that. And this is the letter from the DES as a follow-up yeah. from their inspection in June. Mm -hmm. uh, and. They are also concurring that as of the date of this letter, which was August 31st, you have not responded to that inspection. Just kidding. I went drove by that um, Sunday, I think it was, on the way back from Apple Bay. And there's a giant pile of stone in, in the um, front parking area. So I wonder if he's beginning to uh, do some work. Do some work. It's like, it's not, maybe a little bigger than that. It's not pieced on this boy type, but whatever the next. I don't know, like I, I, whatever it is, like, it's stuff. There's a big pile of it, though, yeah. so it must be going to, I'm assuming, spread it out, but, you know. Yeah, like some containment. Oh, yeah, there's another issue. They're saying yeah. it looks like there might be some, some movement. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is the tax collectors. Who should have that? I'm going go back the here. This, this, With this, the letter. This one okay. comes from the front office. And the letter says, too. Yeah, it's underneath. Right. Uh, letters are here. Oh, letters are here. This is uh, Cassinelli, the, the letter for oh, I'll take that one Mr. Back. Phipps, and this is the Cassinelli. All right. Got it. That's it for me. That's enough. Okay. okay. Um, this was about um, 
Uh, no, I, I wanted, uh, I think I wanted days as well as hours. So I don't, I don't think it's been updated. Okay. Order one two seven two to B and B printing for twenty five copies of the zoning ordinance current edition double sided for a total of one hundred and eighty five dollars coming out of the printing and copying line. A hundred times I say. So excited about right. this. So I open it up for questions and comments. And I will, I'll just say this: this is the printing of the zoning books, and. Um, it's, I think it, it, we put in the request to have it also linked on the website. But this is your yes. lovely bound paper copy yes, of updated. Everybody's going to be working back. from the same book. I'm, I'm so I'm excited. I'm, 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 as excited I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I like that it's on the website. Yes, I, I, I do too. I do too because the, our, both the front office and the select board office get lots of calls. Yeah, absolutely. Constantly from people absolutely. where if it was just on the website, it would alleviate the need to have someone answer those questions and maybe be working on other things. You can imagine if we were to subscribe to that one. <coughs> All right. All right, we're ready to call this one, it looks like. All those in favor say aye. 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 So, about tonight's presentation, mm -hmm. uh, I suspect that, um, you know, we can give ourselves some time to think about it, but we can... I'll have it on the agenda for next week. Sure. We can talk about it. But it is less than the Avatar one for a lot more. It's a lot less than I thought. The I was, I, I was waiting for, okay, that's very the... Large, that's scary the, number, and that wasn't... Well, that's the startup, and then there's the annual fee, right, right, but right, it was, yeah. looks like it's, that's it. So more people dollars. sign up and the company goes down. Yeah, it sounded like that would be true as well. So... It could be a lot of... It would be a useful tool for the planning board, for sure. I don't know if it's EPA. I think it could be, but... Well, anytime anybody has a question that, you know, where you have to look it up some, you know, you have to look at a tax map, you want to look for weather, whatever it is. Especially when we, well, the new book, I don't know, the, the map was going to be in color, so it may be a little easier to see. But we struggle some nights. We have one larger map. We still struggle <laughs> looking from zone to zone. You know, from street to street, I mean, it's hard to tell, right? So, if you, I, I, I was actually kind of giddy. I'm not as giddy as you when this came up, but I like, understand imagine you. if I, I understand. could actually tell what side of the street's in what zone. Exactly. I understand would being be, giddy over data. It would be really, really helpful when you're asked to make a decision, and you could actually make a decision based on fact, not what you yes. think. Yes, isn't it wonderful to be able to Yes, I mean, so... Uh, we get giddy I, over data. I don't usually, and but this one I was like, wow. So, that would be wonderful. Okay. What do you have for us? <laughs> We're not going to vote tonight, though. It's, okay. it's too late. Okay. Uh, budget se uh, for, bu for budget season, the homemakers health services are asking for $1,500. Okay. For budget season, the Red Cross, hmm. American Red Cross, is asking for $750. Um, they could not supply any data for base supply data for Trafford County and then for Rollinsburg, but I got Dover Lee, Rochester, and Summers Road. 82 residents of Trafford County. Yeah, they usually come in like this about fire or something like that. Uh, yeah, they do uh, install 2,800 smoke detectors. Um, 87 people are trained in first aid CPR. This is the Red Cross town list? Yeah. In, uh, this, in, in our town? In our in the county. county. Oh. Mm. Collected 95,000 units of blood. All 40 hospitals uh, received it. 13 families who were separated were reconnected. Uh, 1,300 volunteers within the two states of New Hampshire and Vermont. Oh. So. I thought that was collected was just for East Trafford County, really. She said it was 
So uh, the first one with Douglas? Or? No, it went out to all the hospitals. Oh, we collected 95,000 units of blood from uh, 65,000 donors, all 40 hospitals in New Hampshire and Vermont. All 40? I, I heard four, so I'm trying to think where the other two were. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Makes more sense. Right? Um, this is uh, work from um, the highway. Um, they put together a list of stop signs that need to be replaced and updated and up to code. Um, there's, one. I think, 26 total. Yeah. Um, so that's for budget. So this, this is still part of the highway. Issue, Jeff would come in with a sign budget. Yeah. Just trying to get up, get the signs up to code. Yes. There's a lot on that list. Yes. So, and that doesn't include names of road, street yeah. names. Just, Those yeah. are just stop signs. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, this is a purchase order that they created today that they did not notify me of this morning. Um, so I'm going to open it up for discussion. Purchase order 1267 to Power Eagle for one hose for pressure washer and soap for washing the trucks for a total of $254. Highway department is very majorly over budget. Yeah. Well. So, however, I mean, you, you probably have, maintaining right, exactly. very expensive. So expensive I'm, I'm working at, at bringing it, at, at looking for ways to to cover it. I'm I'm particularly interested in the, the vehicle line, which is one of the biggest hits. That plus the, the winter expenses, the salt and the material. Yeah. So I'm I'm currently actively looking at it, and may, maybe there's something I could report next week, but. I would say we can, this is, uh, I would recommend doing this. I'm assuming the hose must have broken because yeah, exactly. so I'm, it, the vehicles are been cleaned the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Uh, so I would recommend, unless, I, happens, unless there's any other comments, I, I will call a question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Engineering services are asking or letting us know that they are available for engineering for the next year. Um, just an uh, advertisement. Um, they're called Holden Transportation Engineering and Surveying out of Bedford. Okay. Over the years, we've worked with municipalities throughout the state of New Hampshire many times on a repeated basis, and they show lovely bridges. So. Yeah, okay, nice. <laughs> Um, the rest of this is stuff that's already come in, um, planning, uh, the transportation meeting that our um, executive council we're going to have. Mm. Those are coming up. Mm. Maybe that's what you had in your calendar. That's a weekday. Okay. No, it's like a Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, yeah, here we go. Uh, when... Thursday the 28th um, in Dover at 4 o'clock, and Thursday the 28th in Rochester at 7. So, and then they gave us two copies of that. Um, shipyard, this is from last night, or last week. Uh, trucking from last time, highway from last time. Uh, Stratford Regional Planning Commission, me and Mike are on. And that's it. Okay. Everything else is old. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to put that back in the, the card. So I'm sure I forget. Thank you. So paper. All right. Thanks. Okay. So I'll open up for community input, and then uh, we have two matters uh, that we need to discuss it on public. One is uh, personnel, and the other one is legal. Unless there's something else as no. well. Okay. I so. All right. So any community input? Yes, sir. When you review the culvert project for possibly the corner of church in Washington. Will you be reviewing the whole area or just that particular one? You mean like the storm drains? Yeah, yeah I'm going to have to 
once we get a road agent, I want to go over that with water and sewer as well. We were just appraised of it today. So okay. it wasn't even on the radar. I just assumed that a hill with a road had a catch basin. The only, the only like, potential good news that I can say is that the storm drain that, that is being put in uh, the lower mill parking lot is much larger than what was there before, so it can handle, it'll be able to handle more uh, drainage coming from the mill. As it, as it had in, in the recent past, and the, the cider folks said that too, in a heavy rain, the, the, the drain cover would just you know, float up. So, which was, I think, the combination both of the size of the drain, which was not big, and the fact that it was breaking apart and maybe not flowing well. So, it, yeah. I'm just questioning because the drain that is at the far end of Washington Street has washed out once in the last 10 years of taking the sidewalk with it. The town has come and repatched that part mm -hmm. of the sidewalk. And every winter it bubbles up because the pipe is not deep enough in the ground. And it's clogged, so water doesn't go through. Mm -hmm. It's right on the property line between 426 and 428. So at the far end of Washington Street? Can you send me an email so I don't forget to bring it to the new road group? Somebody had come out and looked at it not too long ago. So I will send you an email. Thank you. Um, if you're moving the smart board, are you moving the pictures to find another place for them to? I know the historical committee likes to come and look. Oh, at absolutely. Them. Oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. Was yeah. But we have they're small. Those the pictures were smaller, so they're not the challenge that you know the, the bigger pieces are. So yes, I love those pictures. And just a reminder that the rec committee is meeting on Sunday night to discuss their budget. This Sunday. This Sunday night. Oh, the the twenty fourth. With the rec committee on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> so the. And you guys know what you did for expense this year with crypto. And we're going to be trying to project okay. better for next year. Perfect. First years are, you know, first couple of years, you know, they're learning exercises. Anything else? All right, then I will entertain a motion to go into non public. I move that we go into non public session for the purpose of dealing with a personnel matter and a legal issue. Second. All right, I'll do roll call, Michael? Yes. Jody? Yes. Suzanne? Yes. Good night, everybody.